following is a special presentation of WYMT TV. Here at Taylor Stadium, the game is tied at 17. Union and Cumberland heading into overtime. Russell takes the handoff, cuts around the left side. He could go. Nobody touches him virtually. Scott Free into the end zone. The extra point is good. Union leads this 24-17 in overtime. Cumberland comes right back. I'm on Broadnax. Feels the pressure in the pocket. He's dangerous when he scrambles, and he does exactly what Russell did. Into the same portion of the end zone. Touchdown, Cumberland. This is for the tie. It's up, and it's no good. Brass Lander will return to Barberville. 24-23. Union in overtime. Some victories are sweeter than others, but all losses are just as bitter. Uh, we were losing last year, and that was another loss, but it was extremely painful. And uh, for us mountain folk, it means a little more, I guess, uh, to win a game against mountain folk. So it, it was about as bad a loss as you could have. You know, the last two games have been decided at the end of the game on uh, extra point or field goal kicks. Last year, went in overtime. A year before, we won it. Uh, uh, in the last seconds on a, on a field goal. So, you know, it doesn't matter what team's better, which team has more talent, whatever. Uh, we're coming in Union to get together. It's going to be a war. This will be the third battle for the Brass Lantern, and Union is riding a two-game win streak over Cumberland. But the Indians still hold the season series edge seven games to five. This year, the Bulldogs have only won once, while the Tribe is four and four. So this is the biggest game for both teams this season. It's one of them classic ones. It's a... Uh rough and uh, there's going to be a lot of hitting. It doesn't matter what the record is between the two teams. Uh, they can be having a winning season. We could be down. We can be up or they can be down. It, it, it won't even matter. When this game comes down, it's going to come down to the last quarter. Birchnall Field is the site for the game, but Cumberland has won four times on Union's campus. A fifth has them taking the hardware south for the very first time. Yeah, it's something to play for, you know. Heck, we don't have a lot to play for now this year, but, uh, you know, we do. We have the brass line here. We've had it for the last two years, and, you know, we'd like to keep it here and, and come and like to take it back home with them. So it adds a little extra incentive to this ball game, but you don't need much incentive when you put Union and Cumberland together. The only reason they have it is because we didn't have a case big enough for it yet. So we're getting that built, and we're going to bring it back home so we can put it in the case. So we thought we'd let them hold on to it for a little bit. It's Cumberland versus Union, the battle for the Brass Lantern. You can see it all next, right here live on WYMT. Today's game is sponsored by Double Quick, Southeast Marine, Cardinal Chevrolet, Lexington Diagnostics, Arby's, First National Bank of Corbin and Williamsburg, and your Toyota dealers. Welcome to Birchnaw Field. John Lewis along with Chip Tillett. Chip, it seems like the weather always plays a part. Uh, some sun came out earlier this morning when we were here, but now it's starting to cloud over and it looks like we could have rain for the game. Well, I tell you what, if it, it rains for the game, that'll mean it's a typical Cumberland Union kind of atmosphere. They always seem to play in wet, damp weather. We got a little bit. The field's not too wet right now. If the weather holds off, it should be fine. Plus, that's football weather, John. Cumberland 4-4. Four and four. Union picks up their first win last week. And we're going to see really two different teams than what people have used to seeing uh, for the first part of the season. Well, Union has completely changed everything around. They've gone to a wide open spread passing offense. Rich Johnson will talk about that more a little bit later on. Cumberland, they're going to pound you with the Mid-South Conference's leading rusher, Randy Freeman. Union has given up yards on the ground this year, so that could be a matchup that we'll watch. This is the third battle of the Brass Lantern. For more on that, let's go over to Rich Johnson. Rich. All right, thanks, guys. I'm down the sideline with the Brass Lantern Trophy. Now, Cumberland College has never won this trophy. Union has won both meetings when they've had the trophy. The Brass Lantern Trophy sponsored by Gatliff Coal Company. Now, if Cumberland College wants to take the trophy back to Williamsburg for the first time, head coach Dan Haley says they need to do three things. First of all, they need to establish long scoring drives. They also need to keep Union quarterback Chris Harris from getting outside of the pocket. And also, they can't allow Harris to throw deep down the middle of the field. Now, the Union offense has changed since the beginning of the year. First four games of the year, they're only averaging 240 yards a game. The last three games, they've averaged 385 yards per game of total offense. Now, how have they done that? Well, they have a new wide-open offense that's similar to the Hal Mummy offense. And the person that's triggering that offense is freshman quarterback Chris Harris. He took over for Sean Wollum, who started the season at quarterback. Wollum now wide receiver. Now, we talked to both these coaches earlier this week about the offense, and they have these comments. 
And so we had to make some type of change just to try to make it through this season. And it's been very productive. And our young men are really enjoy running it. You know, we're throwing one game, we threw the ball 47 times. So we're a lot like Cal Mom at Kentucky, I guess. But we're averaging over 30 passes a game. And, and it's helped our running game out. And, and our guys are enjoying it. So we got some confidence again what we're doing offensively. The thing that concerns us is they, they made a change in their offense about uh, three weeks ago and uh, went to a spread offense, basically uh, shotgun formation. And uh, they run a lot of athletes down the field and their quarterback now is an athlete and uh, it gets real problems uh, for the defense because they have a bunch of ways to throw the ball and then they can bust you up the middle with a run. As for Cumberland, on offense, they'll turn to senior running back Randy Freeman. He currently leads the Mid-South Conference in yards rushing with 937. He's also scored 13 touchdowns. We'll have a little bit more on him at halftime. But for now, that's it from the sideline. Now back up to you guys. All right, Rich, we'll be checking in with you during the game. We're back with the kickoff live from Birchnaw Field, Union College versus Cumberland College, right after this. Introducing the all-new Troy-built Chipperback line. Now recycle leaves, twigs, even branches and limbs like this as you walk. Plus, it's backed by a seven-year warranty only from Troy-built. The secret is a powerful vacuuming shredder and auto-feed chipper that handles branches up to two inches thick. Plus, all your yard wastes are chopped up, reduced, and bagged automatically. So stop struggling. Discover the new line of Troy-built Chipperbacks at your dealer today. Visit Frazier's Farmer Supply in Whitesburg. If you've ever needed one good reason to buy a boat, Tracker's got 500. That's right. Buy any one of 15 Bass Tracker or Nitro packages, and we'll give you a $500 Bass Pro Shops gift certificate absolutely free. Pick out your new boat and choose from thousands of products. Anything from the famous Bass Pro Shops catalogs. What are you waiting for? Get on down to your Tracker dealer now. Come see Rex and Dave at Southeast Marine in Corbin. 528-2628. We are back live at Birchnaw Field in Barberville, Kentucky. Union College and Cumberland College getting ready to kick things off. The rain holding off so far, Chip Tillett. Looks like we're going to end for a good game. Of course, Union winning their first game last week. Cumberland College 4-4, four and four, always a big rivalry. It is a big rivalry. You know, they've played already this last year, the past couple years. The battle for the Brass Lantern the last two. Cumberland leads the season series 7-5 at Union. They've won two in a row, looking to make it three straight. You saw that big trophy from the Gatliff Coal Company, the Brass Lantern. They want that to stay in Barberville. Guess what? The Tribe, they want to take it back down to Williamsburg. Union, though, they're set to receive. They want the ball first. They want to show off that new offense. Well, we'll get an early look at that new offense. There'll be freshman Mike Donnelly kicking off for Cumberland College, back deep to receive for Union. It's Todd Hudson and Don Williams. You got to... You've got to think that early on Union wants to establish the offense. They are still working out the kinks in the wide open offense. It's not something that's easy to grasp. Field position is always important. If you can get a good kick return early on, that always helps. And it looks like it's uh, fumbled. Uh, he has a problem there on the uh, goal line. So that one's going to be uh, taken in for a touchback. So Union College will come back out on the 20-yard line. And we're going to get a look at this, what Tuck Willem, Coach Tuck Willem, calls the Hal Mummy offense. Well, they had a chance to see an offense like this earlier this year, Iowa Westland playing them, and they were up the whole game. Westland scores three touchdowns in the fourth quarter, come back and beat them the week. They had a bye before the Georgetown game. Tuck said they were king on Dana Overton, their star running back who is actually out for this game with a knee sprain. So we will see Todd Hudson in there replacing him. And you've got a change at quarterback with Chris Harris coming in, the true freshman. We're going to see what he does because Sean Woolham, their former starting quarterback, is now an H-back. Well, Harris under center here. And he's looking to pass already. So this is the Hal Mummy offense, the quick passes. But that one no good there. The intended receiver is Lloyd Dollar. Lloyd Dollar came out last week. He is a tailback by trade usually. He's had some problems holding on to the ball. You saw a little bit of that on the kickoff. Tuck would ideally like him to be a tailback, but he, he's had problems holding on to the ball, so they make him a receiver where your hands are pretty important too. But he had a couple of big touchdown catches last week. They moved him to receiver. He has speed to burn, and he's a great talent. It's just whether or not he can hold on to the ball. Harris going to work this one out of the shotgun. He's got a receiver open down there, and it looks like he was maybe pushed out of bounds. Are they going to call it a completion? They will. Looks like that, Quali Rolak. Absolutely. That is number 80, Quali Rolak, the senior out of Mariana, Florida. 
and he caught uh, the touchdown in last week's win over at North Greenville, which was Union's first win of the season. I tell you what, this kind of offense, they're going immediately to the no huddle. Harris pointing out his receivers, checking off the line of scrimmage. You got the first down yardage. That's exciting football. That's what the fans like to see. Tuck says the players like to play in this kind of system. Harris under center showing a three wide receiver to the pitch now. And he looks like he's got some room here. He's across the 50, down to the 40, and taken down at the 35-yard line. That is number 10, Todd Hudson, who is supposed to be a star this year. Well, I tell you what, Dana Overton, they're, they're running back, former Division I player, originally signed with the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor. Didn't work out there, transferred to San Diego State. Said some politics were involved in that situation. Wound up backing up George Jones, who is currently with the Pittsburgh Steelers. He's got a sprained knee. Todd Hudson had over 100 yards last week when Overton went down. He looks like good, but everybody split out as a wide receiver now. One, two, three, four, five. And Harris, of course, working from the shotgun here. And he's gonna, looks like he's gonna look right there. He's got a receiver for a minimal gain there. That is Dwayne Crenshaw. He is the backup tailback listed on their depth chart, but I tell you what, they're gonna put everybody out in the pass patterns. Well, this is a, a team that really needed something to go offensively. Uh, of course, the uh, heartbreaker they had at Iowa Wesleyan where they gave up so many unanswered points. It looked like they had the game won. So they figured maybe we need to do something like that. Of course, Iowa Wesleyan, the former Hal Mommy team. Harris in the shotgun again. Boy, this team really likes to pass right now, but it looks like they're gonna hand off here. The draw play, that is number 38, Dwayne Crenshaw. And boy, he thought he had it there, and he is down about the 20-yard line. I tell you what, John, you've seen this offense work if you've watched the University of Kentucky, and when you split the players out like that and go for the draw, it really works. It's really effective. And Dwayne also an excellent blocking back, too, but he's starting to get the, his number called right now. They've got him back in the backfield as a one-back set. What they can do out of this set is fake to him and throw for the end zone. You might see him do something like that here on the next couple plays. Showing three wide receivers here. This is Harris, and he has, oh, what a great catch. That is number two, Tyrone Rim, and he is down inside the 10-yard line. So, boy, Union really marching the ball. This is what they needed to do to establish this offense early on. I tell you what, Sean, when you're talking about an offense, they've only been playing in this for a few weeks. They don't look like they've been playing it for a couple weeks. They are taking it right down on Cumberland and, and just marching it down. All effective plays, a great catch by Tyrone Ream there. Uh, they look good. He led the Bulldogs with receptions back in 96. He had 15. And uh, Union huddling up now. Cumberland College, they really need a defensive stop here on first and 10 with the ball on the 10-yard line. This is the area of the field where this offense may be the least effective. Sometimes they run into a little problem, but look at that. Quarterback draw for Harris, and he is in for the touchdown. Union gets on the board first. It is 6-0. The cannons go off, and the crowd really loves that. Now, Union, they have established that offense. What better way to do it than a drive like that all the way down for the touchdown on the quarterback draw? John, no problems with the effectiveness there. Well, basically what they did, everybody split out. You've got the linebackers and defensive line looking for pass, dropping back into coverage. Harris takes it into the offense easy. That's something that Coach Dan Haley was worried about because he is an athlete. Chris Harris is the freshman. He looked good there. Tim Philpott wearing number 68, the kicker out of Bell County, normally 27, boots it through the upright, and just like that, 12.48 left in the first half. Look at that, first quarter. That's right, it is 7-0 Union College. We're back after this. Some days at the office can be very rough. Or sometimes just when you're enjoying a friendly game with the guys, you can suffer a nagging sports injury. Lexington Diagnostic Center has a new MRI machine that's ideal for orthopedic and sports-related injuries. It's a teammate of their patient-friendly open MRI machine. So if your doctor orders an MRI, ask to come to Lexington Diagnostic Center. We'll get you back in the game.
And we are back as Union College gets ready to kick off. Cumberland College looking to answer that touchdown. 7-0 Union leads. Back deep to receive for Cumberland will be number three, Eddie Robinson, and number 33, Chris Morrison. John, now Cumberland's in a position Union has taken and it just driven it right down the field with ease. They've got to come out and do something offensively. They want to get the ball to their big running back, run some time off the clock because it took no time at all to score there. Chris Morrison, a little trouble on the handle, but he picks it up. Looking for room, he is down on the sideline there and pushed out of bounds by number eight, that is Devin Roach. Devin, so, Devin Roach is, is a linebacker by trade. He's been actually pushed out of the starting position, and uh, he's one of their catalysts last year. He's been pushed out by senior Andre Washington, actually leads the Bulldogs in tackles this season, and Washington has really been a player that stepped up this year. Roach is not starting, and it's because of Washington. The Union defense now gets a chance to stop Randy Freeman. Another freshman at quarterback, it's Patrick Wiggins out of Sewanee, Georgia. He gets the handoff here to number five with some running room there. That is Randy Freeman. Of course, Randy was a Mid-South Conference Player of the Week. Last week, he had a game-high 157 yards on 19 carries. He only needs, uh, going into this game, needed 27 yards to reach the 1,000 mark for the season. So they really count on Randy Freeman to grind this ball out for the Cumberland College Indians. Well, when you face an offense like this that's so explosive as we just saw in the first drive, you really want to keep that offense off of the field because if they can score in the little amount of time that they did, you don't want them on the field that much. Cumberland College working out of the eye here, the pitch to the guy who's dotting the eye, that is Randy Freeman, and he breaks a tackle, and he is down on the 40 or the 35-yard line, and that's probably going to call in for a measurement unless they're going to go ahead and give him the first down on that. They got but the first down on that one. They're going to move the change run. on that. A great run by Randy Freeman with a good second effort. First and 10, the ball now on the 26-yard line. A nice pitch out and a good block from his blocking back. Cumberland College trying to establish their, themselves as they try to get into a uh, into an offensive pattern here. They're going to run out of the eye again, showing uh, wide receivers on both ends. The uh, handoff here, that is number 34, Jeremy Simpson, a former Mr. Football. And he gets a gain of about five on that play. And we bring up second and five ball on the 35-yard line. He's out of Lincoln County. It's kind of a situation, you know, whatever happened to. Well, he's alive and well and playing for Cumberland College. But you would think when you were Mr. Football, you'd be the feature back. He's really not. He, he's had some struggles. He's playing today starting at fullback. But the guy they're looking to is number five, Randy Freeman, who does, as you said before, have 973 yards rushing. He certainly would like to go over the 1,000-yard mark against their arch rivals, the Union Bulldogs. Second and six now, the pitch again to Freeman, looking for room. Breaks a couple of tackles down at the 40-yard line, maybe a little bit past. We'll give him the 42-yard line there. And Freeman just continues to rack up yards, short as they are, but like you said, he only needs about 27 to reach 1,000, and he's working on that right now. I think more importantly, they're working toward the end zone to answer Union's touchdown. A couple of, a couple of nice moves there. A faded tackle by Randall Tex Cobb, number 52. Out of Leslie County, he did a good job beating him. He tried to make an ankle tackle and just didn't work. I, I don't think Randy Freeman's the kind of running back you can ankle tackle. He's a, and he's you a don't, pretty big guy. And you don't tackle him high either. You've got to get him good. Patrick Harris going to be under center again. They're going to run out of the eye again, and they're going to have to take a timeout. Look like a little bit of confusion in the backfield there. They've, they're staring at a third and four here. They've moved the ball pretty effectively, but not quite as well as Union did on that first drive. You certainly got to make sure you, you get your signals right. Well, we've got a timeout on the field. We'll be back after this. Union leads 7-0. Why do I keep taking the plunge? Really, darling, how else am I going to get this hot, tasty au jus onto all this tender, juicy roast beef? Arby's French Dip Sub fulfills all my needs. I can even get it with Swiss if I'm in the mood. It is true love. And best of all, it doesn't require a prenuptial agreement. You can go anywhere and get filled up, but you can only get the French Dip Sub at Arby's. The automotive world's got a new point of reference for quality and value. Ford Taurus, America's best-selling car for the fifth straight year. It's got more horsepower than Camry or Accord, 13 standard features you can't even get on Chevy Lumina, and not even Dodge Intrepid has more room. What does it all mean? We'll get right to the point. There's more to a Ford. 
now you'll get even more out of your Ford. Get $2,000 cash back on Ford Taurus. Just visit your best quality Ford dealer today. We're back live now. Patrick Wiggins under center with a three-back set here. And the play-action fake here. He's going to pass, and oh, Randy Freeman just dropped that one. Tanned receiver a, a little bit behind, and that would have been a great catch, and still, if he'd caught it, it would have still been a little short because they were right there to pounce on upon him. Now, Union's defense has done their job. I tell you what, Union's defense, their problems have centered on offense this year. They've really got a, a pretty good defense. The problem is the offense early on couldn't move the ball, and especially from last year, they had one of the best defenses in the country. They've got a great defensive secondary. You've got a punt situation. This is near midfield, but they won't fake it. They'll go Union with a pretty good rush. Number three gets in there. It's short. They will just let it bounce. It's Peter. And that one down at the 30-yard line. So that's going to bring up first down for Union College again. And if they establish themselves, they've already established themselves on the offense, and we're going to see more passing. Boy, uh, two different kinds of offenses we saw there just on the first couple of drives. Uh, we saw Union College are airing it out today, something they've not done. And they had, were rather effective with it with a touchdown and Cumberland College running the ball. But Union's defense holds. I tell you what, what they've done is they've got their crowd involved in the game early on so far. Their team is excited, and they've got the early lead, a little momentum. They've got trips now to the right. See if Chris Harris and the boys can do it again on the second possession, or if Cumberland can adjust. It's hard when you're facing an offense like this because you don't see it a lot. That's true, 9.52 left here in the first quarter. He's got a receiver there, Chris Harris does. That is Todd Hudson, and he is down. Looks like inside the 35-yard, uh, the 45-yard line. They look like they're going to measure that right around the chains. Nope, they won't measure it. They'll just go ahead and give it to them. They'll go ahead and give them the benefit of the doubt on that one. Union continuing to march the ball here. 9.44 left in the first quarter. And they continue to go out of the shotgun. And a lot of people think when you play an offense like this, you can't control the ball. That's not true because the throws you make are pretty safe throws. They're conservative throws, even though you're running four or five wide receivers out. I'm not a whole lot of deep throws. And then you can do the draw to keep the defense honest. And really, you know, you pick up four or five yards each time, you're going to move the ball down the field effectively. And that's exactly what they do, the draw there to uh, Todd Hudson. And Union College, they still drive. Union College has also changed their helmets this year. They've gone to a little bit of a San Francisco 49ers look, and it, it's a really good look. They've got the, the orange jerseys, the black pants on today, as everyone can see on TV. <laughs> that's a good thing about color television. We're not black and white today. <laughs> Harris under center again, gets it out to, that is number 88, Kenny Haymond. And there you see the helmets there, the, uh, as you said, the San Francisco look, and they're all installing an almost San Francisco-like offense, lots of passes. I tell you what, they're going to the fullback, too, to keep the, the defense honest, because a little change of pace, a little bigger guy, harder to bring down, Dwayne Crenshaw, a huge guy. That's good. I called number 88. That was number 38, Dwayne Crenshaw. Of course, the senior out of Pasioma, California. He's 2-1, 230. He's been getting the call. They call him an excellent blocking back. So, But what we've seen so far in these drives, looks like it's been an excellent uh, running back, too. That one just short of the first down. That looks like that's going to bring up third and one as the ball is on the 47-yard line. This is a, a situation with a guy like Harris that just inches away. Probably going to see something like a quarterback sneak when you're when you're that close. Or it's a situation, maybe you're in four-down territory when it's this close, a little play action to go deep, especially with that many receivers, which you've got the receivers split out wide like that, and they've only got four down linemen. There look like there are gaps there. The sneak is a, a good option. Todd Hudson, the lone setback, and the play action fake, and they are going to pass. Harris looking for a receiver, and he's got one. That one, oh, it looks like almost intercepted. Number two, Tyrone Ram almost had a handle on it. He tipped it up. That one nearly intercepted by number 15. Todd Davis, Todd Davis, really, the free safety coming over in coverage. It's kind of a tough throw, and that's the situation. You've got the defensive backs ready for it. Will Union go? We said it might be four down territory, fourth and, and just inches. It says one, but that's just inches. You saw the play action right there. Not a bad idea to try and go deep. Here they've come out with a big wide set. You think maybe, but they've got blitzing linebackers coming up, and there's the quarterback sneak that... We thought we'd see a play before. So, hey, we get something right, John Lewis. And finally, we get something right. Of course, uh, looks like uh, this will bring up first down now, the quarterback sneak. You called it right, Chip Tillett. 
in Cumberland College. They're uh, bending a little bit here on defense, and they're wanting, they need a defensive stop again. And that brings up first down. You know, Coach Woolham is not a conservative coach. He will pull out all the stops, flea flickers, fakes. That really not that outrageous of a call. You're fourth and in inches at midfield when you've got a big quarterback like Harris and a, a big offensive line, which they do have. That's an easy play. More backyard ball. They got four wide receivers. Harris in the shotgun. He rolls out. Looking, looking, and he's got Todd Hudson again, and he is knocked out, but that's still a first down as Union College. Boy, I tell you what, they're like Sherman to the sea. They keep on marching. He's leveled by the strong safety, Donnie Wright. Played for Jenkins High School. He's a senior. He said each year this rivalry keeps building and building. Talk to him on Thursday. When he first came in, he said he, he didn't really realize how big of a game it was. Now he realizes he wants to win this game. But so far, Union has marched it down. Harris is going to go under center now. And he may try to pick on the cornerbacks. Cumberland College has freshman cornerbacks out there. That's a short run that goes for very little. But uh, this is going to be something that we really need to look for. Of course, as we said, Union College is going to pass the ball. But Cumberland College, they have uh, Mark Davis at cornerback who's a freshman out of Nashville. They have Shane Ashby, a cornerback, a freshman out of Nashville a lot. Also, Dante Sweat, a cornerback, a sophomore. So a lot of young uh, in, young players in the secondary, and that could be a problem for Cumberland College. The defensive line, though, steps up there and stops the run. They hadn't done much of stopping either the run or the pass so far. That's what they need. You're down the, the territory where you could get a field goal. A little bit of a scramble, and Crenshaw again. And Number 97, Tony Irvin, their leading tackler. He comes up with the stop. He's one of the better players all Mid-South Conference, but it's another first down. And, and John, that's one of the dangerous things about an offense like this. You spread out the wide receivers, but you've always got those backs who can stay in and block or run out and release into the pass pattern. And they're virtually uncovered. And when they are covered, they're going to be covered by a linebacker. And it's definitely a, a speed advantage to the back. It's a safety valve, but it, it's working. Yeah, safety valve is a term a lot of them don't like, but you know what? That's exactly what it is, and when it works, just got to go ahead and accept the label of safety valve. Well, this time Harris will be under center again. The handoff, the fake to Todd Hudson. He's looking to pass here, and oh, that one goes just out of the hands of John Burgos. And boy, he really got nailed there <laughs> by number seven, Dante Sweat, the sophomore out of Bowling Green, Kentucky. Uh, that's a wide receiver's nightmare. You have to go up. You know you're going to get hit. It goes through his hands to throw a little bit high. Really, the, only the second bad throw he made. The other one, a near interception there. But he uh, he paid for that a little bit. That's the defensive back's dream, though. That's right. Well, Burgos was once a defensive back. He was moved to wide receiver. The sophomore had a right knee sprain against North uh, Greenville last week. But he is back in action today. Union has moved their offensive and defensive personnel all around this year. We've yet to see a reception by Sean Woolham, the former quarterback. There's the option pitch, though. They do a good job stopping that. That's out to Todd Hudson. I don't know. Hard to tell from our vantage point here. Chad Price, the linebacker, comes out. He was the one to make the first hit and stop them. And they've done a good job stopping the run the last two times. So that will bring up, looks like third down. Harris going back. Third and 11, the ball now on the 15-yard line. That brings up third and eight now we have. But, uh, Chip, boy, I tell you what, we talked about Union and their offense, and what can we say? They've uh, they've done their job today, and this is a different Union than what we saw earlier in the season. Certainly a different Union. This, this is a play where Cumberland's defense would like to step up and stop them. He but, gets down to the 10, does Burgos, but he is dropped there, and they will not get the first down. So that brings up fourth down, and now a decision for Coach Tuck Willem. Do you go ahead and go for the chip shot field goal? Or you do, go, do you go ahead and trust your offense enough that they've done so well so far? Or do you go ahead and trust it to punch it in for a touchdown? Fourth and three. Wouldn't be surprised to see Tuck Woolham go for the field goal in this kind of situation. Well, it and looks like we've got a timeout. So we'll take a break here. And Union, they're on the march, but they've got fourth down and a decision to make. It's 7-0. selling car in America, and I've always wanted one. Now's the time to make it happen. During your Toyota dealer's premier sales event, you can lease a 98 Camry for just $2.59 a month. Your Toyota dealer has a way with numbers like Toyota has a way with quality. No wonder Camry's number one. I'm so... Well, get going then. This special Camry lease ends November 3rd. See your Toyota dealer. He's there to help you get more car for less. Every day. Today at the 
Kentucky Lottery's Powerball Development Lab, a ball of extraordinary proportions has escaped. We were increasing the minimum jackpot to $10 million and adding a cash option when it overpowered us and broke through the wall. The rogue ball has left a trail across the state. Dr. Newby has this advice for anyone encountering the ball. Play it. New Powerball, $10 million minimum jackpot and a new option to take cash. Somebody's going to win. Might as well be you. Well, we're back, and it looks like Chris Harris, the quarterback, is going to try to punch it in. Fourth and three, 547 left in the first quarter, and they're going to go for the first down. That's number 28 in motion. And it looks like he is going to, uh, he was the intended receiver there. That was number 28, John Burgos. But no luck on fourth down, so Cumberland College takes over on downs. But you cannot blame Tuck Woolham for the call because the offense has been so effective so far. That's a big stop, though, for Cumberland College. Union really driving down on them. They stop them. No points. The flip side of that, they do have some pretty bad field position to score themselves 90 or so yards to get into the end zone. Another reason why kicking at this college level is not a given. That would be a, a pretty short field goal, but kicking game has played a key role in all the in the last four games here it's decided the the victor and they will give the ball back to freeman no decision there that's right he is taken out of bounds there by anthony patrick the senior out of hazard he played at not county central for coach jay cobb and a minimal gain on that one if gain at all over the past four years last year of course indians miss an extra point lose by one point the year before that two years ago here at birch now field Jeremy Majeski, Magic, the NAIA All-American, a 25-yard field goal, 12 seconds to play. Caps a 15-point rally for Union. They win it by a point. Year before that, Jeremy Majeski missed three field goals. Union loses by a field goal. Year before that, it was another field goal by Cumberland that won it. They do a good job wrapping up number 24. Uh, that that is pitch. Reggie Sutton. Yeah, the pitch again to uh, Randy Freeman, and uh, nowhere going on that one. Reggie Sutton is really their leader on defense, John. He, uh, he's part of a, a really good defense. He's one of the returners from their last year's squad and, and really a fantastic unit. The defensive line, they've got Keith Fields back. Arthur Carter has switched now. He is down defensive line, and their secondary is really second to none in NAIA. You've got some great people back there. John Fay, if he gets a pick today, he becomes Union College's all-time leading interception guy. But so far, they're not throwing the ball enough to give no. him a chance. Third and four, 456 left. This is the pitch again to Freeman. Boy, they've really called his number all day long. He breaks a couple of tackles, still looking for a gain, but he is taken out of bounds, wrestled out, and that could bring up fourth down. See where they measure that. He may have gotten outside and gotten the first down, and he does. Oh, yeah, he's got the first down, so good call, Chip. 4.43 left in the first quarter, and Cumberland College trying to sustain a drive of their own. He didn't have it initially. The defense did a good job of making him string it out but he was able to turn the corner there and get around for the first down yardage. And that shows not only is he a bruising running back, but he's got a little bit of speed there, a threat to go from anywhere on the field, and they're going to keep handing the ball to him. Well, we're, Wiggins this time is going to run out of the shotgun, so we'll see what happens here. He's back to pass. Got some and pressure. He does. Now he's going to have to just tuck it and run, and he does a good job. He is up to the 50-yard line before he's tackled. Boy. That one was uh, something out of nothing. Patrick Wiggins was absolutely in trouble, but the freshman makes a good senior decision. He tucks and runs, and boy, he's almost into uh, to Union College territory. Just a, a great individual effort by Wiggins. He was feeling pressure from the left side, is able to spin around, and the Union DBs had good coverage. He had nowhere to throw the ball. What he did have was a little lane to run in. Does a good job getting the ball out the midfield, and that's a big gain. Gives. Cumberland a little bit of momentum here. That's right. Something they've needed. They're going to run out of the eye this time. Randy Freeman dotting the eye. It's Chris Morrison there. And it's going to be Randy Freeman. He's going to get the uh, handoff there. Breaks a couple of tackles. Reverses its field. Runs down the sideline before he's taken out of bounds there by number 22. That's Don Williams, the cornerback out of LaGrange, Georgia. I tell you what, John, that's the second time Randall Cobb has had a, a shot at him. It's the second time he's eluded him. Just some great moves, good balance, good center of gravity, able to get out of the, the trouble there in the backfield because he turned nothing into something there. And uh, that seems to be the uh, story of this drive for Cumberland College. Patrick Wiggins uh, trying to get the troops rallied here. Brings up second and two, 327 clock running in the first quarter. This is uh, Chris Morrison dotting the eye this time. 
Jeremy Simpson also in the backfield. And it looks like Union jumped off sides there. We'll see if they were drawn. And the uh, flag looks like it was thrown Union's way, so could be off sides. Referee Keith Morgan will help us out with this. Dead ball, encroachment on the defense, five-yard penalty. And it was indeed offsides, encroachment on the defense. Now we'll give Cumberland College a first down here, first penalty of the game, and a uh, relatively mistake-free game so far. So far, but uh, as you can imagine, uh, Tuck Woolham kind of shaking his head down there, kind of a superstitious coach he is. We'll talk about that a little bit later. He is uh, wearing the same pants that he wore in North Greenville's win last week. And uh, also, he got a bag of pretzels, and he won the game uh, with, after, after eating the pretzels. So, of course, he got another bag of pretzels this week, hoping for a win. This is Chris Morrison hoping for a first down run, and he breaks a tackle, and he's got the first down before he's run out of bounds there. It was Andre Washington, the linebacker, on the play. Tuck is not happy with his defense right now. They did a, such a great job stopping Cumberland on the first drive. He's trying to exhort his defense to, to do a little better, and Cumberland having some success on the ground now, first with Freeman and now with number 33. So uh, Tuck hoping the superstition will pay off, but right now what's paying off is Cumberland College offense. The eye seems to be su successful enough that they're going to run it out again. It's Chris Morrison dotting the eye this time. Patrick Wiggins, the freshman who moved from defensive back. He is under center as quarterback. The handoff now, this one to Jeremy Simpson, the uh, former Mr. Football, and that one's close to a first down. We'll see what happens here. 2.45, the clock's still running. I tell you what, this is an important drive for Cumberland because despite the fact that Union has moved the ball well, they go down and score. This is a tie ball game. Union elects not to kick a field goal early. That may come back to haunt them a little later on. Usually the, the safe bet is to, to go for the field goal, go for the points in the first half and just put them on the board, but no field goals are a gimme at, at this level. Not at all. The ball on the uh, far side of the field, they bring out the chains. Looks like it's going to be short. Nope, they got it. Oh, they just do got it. it. All right, By so half the length. as we said, it's uh, on the far side of the field. Good call there. Glad you got your contacts in today, Chip Taylor. Tuck having a talk there with uh, Patrick or with uh, Chris Harris. Hoping to get this offense moving again, but right now it's the defense that is Union College concerned. That's an endorsement for Dr. Faggot as my eye doctor. <laughs> Haven't gotten new contacts in about two years, but these ones seem to work pretty well. The eye is so successful, they're going to do it again. It looks like the rain may be getting ready to fall, but it looks like Chris Morrison is going to get the handoff here. He pushes his way up and close to first down yardage again. This one on the 20-yard line, Chris Harrison. I have Morrison on my chart. That should be Chris Harrison, not to be confused with number three Chris Harrison of UK basketball fame. Well, I, I don't know where Chris Harrison is these days. He's not coaching anywhere. We haven't heard from him in a while. Maybe he's a tailback now, but uh, this Chris Harrison is, is a little bit bigger and more beefy than the other Chris Harrison. And I, I don't a, think he can shoot the three. I don't think Chris Harrison of UK fame is 6'0", 195. No, and this is Chris Harrison is not from Tallsboro High School in Kentucky, which actually no longer exists. This is Wiggins under center again, and the eye continues to be the go-to, but that's Randy Freeman getting wrapped up by Derek Tucker, the strong safety, and boy, that's not what Cumberland College needs. Well, that's that what, brings up third down. That's what Union wants. They got the ball close down to the first down. On first down, second down, somebody comes up and makes a play, and that's what you've got to do when they're getting down near scoring territory. So Freeman loses... Three yards on that play, brings up third and six, the ball on the 23, 115, the clock running, still left in the first quarter. Cumberland will go back to the shotgun, maybe throw a little. This not quite the kind of shotgun that Union runs, a little bit more conservative, just two wideouts have the two backs. They split out into the flat. Wiggins in trouble, and he is taken down. That is number 52, Randall Cobb out of Bear Branch, Kentucky. He, he has one he, and a half sacks this year, make it two and a half. He didn't miss that time. No he, problems he getting Wiggins down. 6'2", 260. Randall Tex Cobb, they call him. And boy, he was in on that, on that sack, the big guy out of Leslie County, Kentucky. They got a tremendous push out of their defensive line there. Nothing they could really do. Of course, when you put four guys out into the pass pattern, you tend to happen if you don't have the protection. And they will punt. Got to see what job the punter does. And this is Tony Irvin, the linebacker. He also does the punting for them, see if he can corner them in. And, and it looks like it will go out of the end zone. So that will be a touchback with 18 seconds left in the first quarter. 
and Union College with another chance to drive down the field. Good job to the defense of Union College of holding off what it looked like a great Cumberland march. Uh, the quarterback there with the uh, big run up to a Union College territory, but uh, Union hangs tough. That's a situation where you really could have backed Union up. They really only net 13 yards on the punt. And you'd like to see a little bit more put them down deeper because Union has shown the ability to move the ball so far. They've already taken one 80-yard scoring drive. They've driven the other one down inside the 20, came away empty after a fourth down play. See if they can get something else going here with 18 seconds left in this first quarter of play. So Chris Harris here looking to pass, and he's got just through the hands there. Tyrone, Tyrone Ram Ram. almost made that catch. Beautiful loft up, put a little bit of air on that ball, and he almost got it through his hands. Some good coverage there. He couldn't really see the ball as well as he wanted. Just we'll a quick a second down. Just a quick sideline there to uh, Tyrone Rim, but uh, I can imagine that Union College will continue to pass. So successful for them in that first drive. 7-0 Union leads here. 13 seconds now left in the first quarter. Second and 10 ball on the 20-yard line. You talk about the offense last year. He was their leading receiver coming into the year with, I believe, 19 receptions. Sean Wollum already has 16 receptions in just three games. So it tells you what kind of offense they've been running lately. Harris, the, uh, looking for Todd Hudson again. They dropped the ball there on the uh, stop there was Donnie Wright. Now the, the preseason all-conference strong safety. A little better coverage now, and Union is in a very dangerous situation of having the ball for 17 or 18 seconds and going three and out. Certainly, if you're Dan Haley in the Cumberland College defense, that's exactly what you want. Get the ball back as soon as you can and get your offense back on the field because you're seeing a little bit of a momentum shift. This is a big third down because Union has not been able to move the ball so far on first and second down. Third and 10, Todd Hudson in motion. That is the pitch out to Dwayne Crenshaw, and he is down, but not enough for the uh, first down. Looks like he is just over the 30-yard line. That may be that first, may down bring first down yardage. They're going to bring out the chains and measure it. Depends on the spot, but it looks like they're going to give it to him. And just a great job by Crenshaw. The big bruising running back takes on Tony Irvin and the defensive back falls forward for the first down. That is the end of the first quarter, John Lewis. Union up seven to nothing. And I think Rich Johnson is around here somewhere. Let's head down to him on the field. Rich, what do you have for us? Well, I think the rain is beginning to pick up. A light drizzle beginning to fall. Union's been able to move the ball in their first two possessions. Their first drive, Chris Harris with the 10-yard touchdown run. The second time they had the ball, they drive down, go, uh, turn, it over on, turn it over on fourth down. Uh, you know, so far they've had 13 passes, nine runs, pretty balanced there. As for Cumberland, they've run the ball 13 times, only had two passes. One of those was a sack. And Randy Freeman, in the second drive of the game, he was able to go over 1,000 yards for this season. But then Cumberland, you know, an 11-play drive. They drive down the field, but Union was able to stop them with that big sack. We're able to take over. They now have the ball, and Union leading 7 to nothing at the end of the first quarter. Rich Johnson, thank you very much. Hope you have a raincoat down there. It doesn't look like you're, you're prepared yet, but hopefully the rain will hold off. And like you say, a light light rain starting to fall, and certainly that will affect the passing game of Union a little bit. It, if that would happen, you've got to thank advantage to Cumberland with their rushing game. But so far, that's why they may be selected to, to get the ball first, to put the first points on the board. This series has not seen a 7 nothing final since way back in 1990, when Cumberland won 7 nothing at Finney Legion Field in Williamsburg, when Cumberland scored on the very first drive of the game. Scott Hamilton, a 14-yard TD run, the only score. Maybe we'll see something like that again today. Maybe we won't. Well, we'll see what happens here. This is Chris Harris. And he is looking to pass. He's got a receipt. Oh, that was just good coverage there. That was uh, number 80 out there looking to uh, get the reception. Quali Rolak, but uh, good coverage there from the uh, young defensive backs, Shane Ashby and Dante Sweat. Well, they went deep. And that Todd ball. Davis, I'm sorry. He Todd. really really didn't have a chance to, to get that ball. And that's what you want to do if you're a quarterback. If you're trying to throw the deep ball, throw it where it can't be intercepted and only your receiver can get a job at it. They didn't really have a shot at that one. A little bit overthrown, a little deep, but good coverage. He was right there on the coverage. It would have been hard to complete that pass. Chris Harris under center again. Four wideouts they're showing right here. The lone setback is number 38, Dwayne Crenshaw, and he gets the pitch, and he has stopped right about the, uh, maybe even behind the line of scrimmage, well, right on the line of scrimmage. So that brings up third and 10 with the ball on the 30, on the 30, 14-40 left 
Well, they've the had quarter. good success running Crenshaw on the ground. Four carries for 21 yards, a long of 10, an average of 5.3 in the first quarter. And I tell you what, if when you can average 5.3 yards a rush, that's pretty good. Anything over 4.2 is usually considered above average. And they've done a good job rushing the ball. Todd Hudson averaging 8.7 yards. They've been giving Crenshaw the bulk of the work lately. Hudson goes into motion, and this is Harris, look, or yes, Harris looking to pass. And he's got Hudson. Oh, that one just out of his hands. Dante Sweat, give him credit. He got the hand on the ball and knocked that one away. The sophomore out of Bowling Green, Kentucky, was all over that pass from minute one. Well, they're trying to get their, their running back, who's moving out into the slot, into the kind of an H-back position there, trying to run him downfield. They've gone deep twice. They want to see what the Cumberland defense will give them. They haven't been able to do it, and looks like we're going to have a change at quarterback now for the Union Bulldogs. Number 10 has come in. Well, I think they're just going to go ahead and punt this one away. That brought up fourth down, so they go ahead and punt that one, and that one takes uh, not much of a bounce. They go ahead and down that one. So it looks like that uh, Cumberland College, a chance now to answer. They hold tough, and they'll have the ball on about the 25-yard uh, line. Number 10 would have come in. Todd Hudson would have been playing quarterback, but of course he's the up back in the punt situation, not actually looking at the down and distance. But with, with Tuck Willem, you never know. They've changed up this offense so many times, you never know if it's going to be a direct snap or whatever. That not really a situation you look at him to fake the ball, not really a whole lot of success throwing deep. And now you got to think they'll go back to Randy Freeman, who's moved over the 1,000-yard mark already in the, this game. So Patrick Wiggins running under center. The handoff here, that is Jeremy Simpson, and he gets about a yard out of that one. We'll give him a yard after he falls forward. Freeman, their leading rusher his senior season, just like he has been since his freshman season. His freshman year back in 1994, rushed for 580 yards. This is his second 1,000-yard campaign, barring him getting dropped for a lot of losses, which I don't think is going to happen. Back in 1995, his other 1,000-yard season, 1,090 yards, his best season so far last year. 155 rushes for 686 attempts. He had some injuries though last year. This year, a little banged up last week, but he still played. That's why he's the Mid-South Conference Player of the Week this week. He's already gone over the 1,000-yard mark for the season. He has 34 yards already today and adds some more there, about eight or nine more. Andre Washington on the stop there off the uh, draw. Randy Freeman, he has answered the call today and he, we figured he would. Of course, a preseason all-conference pick, as you mentioned, over 1,000 yards for the season already. That brings up first and 10, 13-12 left in the second quarter. Union still leading 7 to nothing, but Cumberland on the move. One reason why, of course, Cumberland wants to run the ball, team rushing defense, Union near the bottom of the Mid-South Conference, giving up 223 yards rushing, and he may be gone on that one. He moves out. Looks if like he can beat number four, which he can't quite get to the outside, but a great run as he picks up 30-plus yards on the carry. Credit Derek Tucker, the strong safety out of LaGrange on the stop because he just saved a touchdown from Randy Freeman. I tell you what, it, Cumberland is doing an impressive job with the running game right now. Union knows what's coming, and they just can't stop it. An excellent job by the offensive line, and then Freeman is hitting the hole hard. And just a burst of speed up the sidelines. Really, the only reason he didn't break that is because they had the angle on him, a little bit more room to the sideline, and he would be gone on that play. Ball on the 25-yard line now. It's first and 10. And, of course, Randy Freeman, the leading rusher in Cumberland, or second leading rusher in Cumberland College history. This is Steve Means, and Steve Means business, but he is tackled by a host of Union College Bulldogs. Union College Bulldog defense means business on that play as well. They're getting down into that scoring territory, and it's when you've got to stiffen up and play good defense. 12.30, the clock running, second and 10, ball on the 25. Union leads 7 to nothing. Cumberland College trying to change things now. Union's DBs, they haven't really had to do much coverage. They have had to provide some runs aboard, some touchdown-saving tackles. John Fay coming up, and the rain looks like it's starting to fall a little bit more now as it becomes more and more overcast, and Cumberland continues to run the ball down the field. This will be a... Uh, this is number 33, Chris Harrison, trying to run around the end there, but nothing happening there. Looked like it was going to be a draw early on. He's pushed out of bounds, Second and th or third and seven now. Ball moved up to the 22-yard line. So what happens now? Well, we're in a passing down, and uh, Patrick Wiggins has been semi-successful in doing that. Or do you call 
Randy Freeman's number again. We'll see what happens. Well, Freeman's had a pretty good job rushing the ball. You may try and switch it up and go with the run here. Maybe a little bit of play action, but Freeman, looks uh, like they're going to go out of the shotgun. Yeah. Freeman uh, taking a, a much-deserved rest now. This is Wiggins in the shotgun. He is flanked to either side by Simpson, but he looks like he is going to pass here. He's looking, and he looks like he's going to have to tuck and run again. Let's we'll see what happens. He is stopped by number 45. That is Wade Davis, the sophomore offensive linebacker from Atlanta, Georgia. And that's going to move the change. That is first and 10 for Union or for Cumberland College. Ball now on the 22-yard line. Patrick Wiggins, just a freshman, but boy, he is making some veteran decisions out there. I tell you what, once again, the coverage was there, but Wiggins is able to, to get past the, the defensive line. They pursued up the field, and he's able to make something happen. Second big run for a first down. He's had the other one a, a little bit longer, but he's also gotten into the rushing column. Out of the eye again. Chris Harrison dotting the eye. Jeremy Simpson behind Wiggins. The pitch now to Harrison. Harrison looking for some room, but he got nothing. Andre Washington again. Of course, Andre had 56 tackles on the year last year, 30 unassisted, and even a sack. He was the man on that one. No gain on that one. And I tell you what, that is why he's knocked Devin Roach out of a starting position. Great pursuit upfield, unblocked, just comes in. He sees the play, smells the pitch outside, and goes and gets him. That's a big loss. We have a penalty, though, on the play, it looks like. Holding on the offense, 10 yards from the end of the run, repeat first down. I tell you what, John, they got penalized on that, but they didn't do a very good job holding because they didn't get anything. They lost yardage, and now they're going to be penalized. It looks like Union's going to accept them and move them back, and why not take them out of field goal range? Absolutely. Because you don't want any points on the board. So a decision here for... Uh, Patrick Wiggins again. He's going to go under center. Freeman back in the ball game now. Staring at a first and 20 first there. And 20. On the first and forever. The play action fake to Freeman. Looking for the end zone and out of bounds. The intended receiver was number 27. That's Brandon Duggar, the senior out of Somerset. So that brings up now second and seems like forever, but it's only second and 20. The ball now on the 23-yard line. And uh, you can imagine that maybe they'll hand it off to Freeman, try to get some yardage out of it, or they may just fling it for the end zone again. You had nothing to lose on first and 20. No, well, you want to try and get some points out of this, though. Maybe run a short route. They went for everything there, see if they could catch Union's defensive back snapping. They had pretty good coverage. The pass thrown out of the end zone. May look for the inside handoff to Freeman here, try and get some of those yards back, get into field goal range. Set up for the draw play, and that's what happens. Freeman, he is down to the... Looks like the inside the 10-yard line there. Still second, and it brings up third and 10 now. Buddy got some good yardage. They're certainly back in, in makeable field goal range for their kicker, Mike Donnelly. Of course, Donnelly, a freshman this year, but uh, he's had uh, so, so much success here early on, and they have really had to come to him when it counted. I tell you what, the, the kicking game, like we said, has played a major role in the games the last four seasons. Mike Donnelly talked to him as well on Thursday. He said that's something they stressed when they brought him in as a freshman. We need a kicker that can get the points for us. And they've had good kickers before. They've got another good kicker in Donnelly, but they'd rather get the touchdown right here, third and ten. Three wide receivers they show. Wiggins looking to throw. He's in trouble. He's going to tuck and run again, see what he can get out of it. And he is taken down hard by number 96. That's Ryan Kelly, the freshman out of Corbin, Kentucky. And great we'll mobility, and it looks like he may have another Cumberland College first down. He has done a great job avoiding the pressure. Really, Devin Roach and another player had a shot at him. He just avoided them and has taken it down, and now this is the time of the, the game. You give the ball to Randy Freeman and let him punch it into the end zone. Right, inside the five, so that brings up first and goal. And, uh, yeah, this is the time when you uh, have to say that the uh, defense is looking at Randy Freeman. Although right now they're on the one-yard line. Wiggins has done a lot of the work getting him down here. You might want to go with the sneak, but it looks like they've got a lot of defensive players in there. All the defensive backs up, and they will pitch it out wide. And Randy Freeman picked up a good block there, and he marches on into the end zone. It's 7-6, and boy, what a good block he picked up to just absolutely go in there untouched. I tell you what, Union had everybody bunched up up the middle. They're thinking perhaps quarterback sneak as Wiggins has displayed such mobility, uh, just an excellent athlete. They decide, well, we'll take the easy road and pitch it out wide left, and they do it, and they get the touchdown. 
So that brings up Mike Donnelly, the man we've talked about earlier for the extra point attempt here. This one is up and it's good after a little bit of trouble on the snap here. So Cumberland College, thanks to Patrick Wiggins, moves this ball down the field. We have a tie score, 945 left in the second quarter, and it's 7-7. Seven, seven. I tell you what, they despite the fact that Union has moved the ball offensively, Cumberland has now picked up the momentum. They stopped Union down on the, the fourth and three inside the red zone. Couldn't do anything. Now we're tied. Seven to seven. It's a whole new ball game and really an excellent job. Freeman has carried the load a lot on offense, but Wiggins really, not with his passing, but with his running, he had a, some huge runs on that play. Two plays where he got down for the first down yardage, an 11 play, 75 yard drive, 415 time of possession, and that ties everything. Seven to seven with Randy Freeman's one yard touchdown run. So Union, they uh, are set to receive now, looking for another score. They're going to try to answer that touchdown. Back deep to receive is Don Williams, also Todd, Todd Hudson, Hudson, and Lloyd Dollar. So names that we have called before have not heard anything yet from Don Williams. We'll see what happens there. This is number 13, Mike Donnelly. Again, he is going to do all the kicking duties today. Uh, some trouble early on with uh, uh, Donnelly uh, as far as uh, extra points go but they've really called on him here for a freshman who's uh, had a lot of success uh, here today. And, you know, his father's had a lot of success here earlier in the baseball season. His father has had a tremendous amount of success. Of course, his father is third base coach for the Florida Marlins, and I, I think they've had a pretty good baseball season as they beat the Cleveland Indians four games to three and really one of the more exciting World Series lately. Of course, his father, while he's in the dugout of those games, is calling up on Saturdays to get Cumberland College information. He said he would use Moises Alou's cell phone and call and get game information or listen to WEZ for the, oh, and there is number 22, Don Williams, their top return man, bust through and a good return all the way out to just shy of the 45-yard line, call it the 44. So a good return for him. We just said we hadn't heard much from Don Williams, but he proves us wrong there. Moving this ball into, uh, trying to get into uh, Cumberland College territory already. That went on the 44-yard line. Tell you what, that was a good return for Don Williams. Of course, he is a defensive back. Has two interceptions for 58 yards on the year. Kick return so far, Don Williams, one for 26. And that one was at least 26. And they will go under center again now out of the shotgun, not out of the shotgun. Three wide receiver package here. Looking to pass here. And that one just in front of Tyrone Rim. Tyrone Rim wanted a pass interference there. It looked like they might have had a little bit of his arm. The ball maybe not catchable, a little bit wide out of bounds, but a good move to get outside. He was open. A little better pass on the money might have gotten him, but he was looking for a little pass interference there. And uh, Tuck looking for a little pass interference for Mike Black, but uh, <laughs> did not happen. Well, Tuck is one of the more animated coaches you'll ever see. He, he gets frustrated. He, he shows his emotions on the field. You know, you know exactly what he's thinking. You know whether he's happy or or sad with you or upset or he lets you know. Dwayne Crenshaw gets the call here. This one takes him up into Cumberland College territory. He's about at the 48 yard line. Tony Irvin again on the tackle. Their leading tackler, the senior linebacker right now third on the all time Cumberland College tackles list. He may move up to second by the end of the year out of Stanford, Kentucky. That'll set up a third down and four ball just shy of the 50 yard line. Nine minutes left here in the second quarter. It's Chris Harris working out of the shotgun here. The fake to the inside handoff. That is down to Todd Hudson. Todd Hudson stopped immediately. That is. And what a great tackle. It looks like it's Donnie Wright. Donnie Wright, of course, uh, we've, caught, we've heard from him before. He was a preseason all-conference pick, and he shows why there. So Union College forced to punt thanks to the efforts of Donnie Wright. Now, this is the kind of situation where you're kind of seeing momentum now shift to Cumberland. Wouldn't be out of the question to see Tuck fake a punt in this kind of situation. He's done it before. He'll do it again. But maybe they can kind of cough and corner the mound with a good punt. Well, we'll see what happens here, fourth and four. And it's going to go ahead, and it will be a punt. That one, a uh, pretty good one there, going down to about the 20-yard line and taken down there by Mark Davis, the cornerback, freshman cornerback. So that brings up first down for Cumberland College. And 7-7 the score, 8-0-7 left in the second quarter. Really, the defensive backs of 
Cumberland Collins have, have done a good job containing the run game, especially right there. The short pass, they've done a really nice job adjusting to those outlet receivers. They've done a, an excellent job on the wide receivers. Nothing down the field. That's something they wanted to do to keep the ball towards the outside and not let anything down the middle be completed. Now they're going to try and pound the ball out again, the inside handoff. That's right. That uh, The call looked like, it looked like uh, Steve Means. We'll have to get a call on that. He's tackled by a host of people there. Actually, that was Jeremy Simpson, number 34, not number 41. So Jeremy Simpson stopped immediately at the line of scrimmage. That brings up second and 10, 750. The clock keeps on ticking here in the second quarter. Jeremy Simpson with a, a few carries now in the first quarter, two carries for eight yards, four per carry average. I can even do the math on that one. <laughs> so Patrick Wiggins now under center. Running out of the eye again. It's Randy Freeman dotting the eye. It's the option pitch. And he, he is will taken keep down there on the uh, option. Stopped by, looks like Don Williams on the stop there. Saw Don Williams with a, a great kickoff return before setting up Union in, in excellent field position. He comes up from the defensive back position and makes a good stop. Wiggins has done a, a nice job eluding tacklers for Union, but he doesn't elude Don Williams right there. We're seeing two freshmen out here making pretty good decisions. Of course, Don Williams, he's almost inescapable as St. Joe's last season when Don Williams racked up nine tackles against them. Patrick Wiggins again working under center, out of the eye. Randy Freeman again dots the eye, but Wiggins is going to pass. He's going to try to, but he is being chased out by Arthur Carter. He gets the pass off, and what a catch there by number 27. And he is looking to run it down, down past the 40-yard line. That is Brandon Duggar. And, and I tell you what, that's a, a great job, but maybe we've seen some sort of flag come out. Well, it appears that they're marching back to the line of scrimmage. I don't see the flag. That's but the kind of a situation where when the quarterback runs around for so long, you're going to get some kind of holding penalty on him. We do see the flag now in the defensive backfield. Illegal use of the hands on the offense, 10 yards from the spot of the foul, repeat third down. And that is a killer penalty for Cumberland College. I should say offensive. Seems like they've had a couple of really good runs there, and uh, but it just what happens when Patrick Wiggins gets in trouble, that the pass and called all the way back and a little bit more after the uh, penalty. Well, that's the, that's the problem when you have a quarterback scrambling like that. You're not sure if he's going to run. You're not sure if you, he's going to pass because he's taken off and run so many times before. Sometimes offensive linemen will use their hands illegally. They will hold, and, and that one gets called back. That was a great game. But Wiggins, again, showing his aloof, elusiveness, uh, getting past the tacklers. Arthur Carter had a shot at him again, and they just couldn't bring him down. Well, they're backed up against the goal line, third and 20. The handoff to Freeman, and he's got some room to run, and then he's taken down there by looks like Andre Washington. Well, Andre Washington was in on it there late. Try to see who was in on that. That was number nine, John Faye. So he has two interceptions on the season and a tackle right there. That's the kind of situation where Cumberland College is just looking to get a little bit more room to punt. The penalty really backs them up into their own territory. And Union should get pretty good field position on this one. 7-7 the score. It's 6-0-5 left in the second quarter. And Cumberland College, they're going to be forced to punt as they were backed up all the way against their goal line. And Bobby Milton, the defensive back, senior from St. Petersburg, Florida. With all the rain, wouldn't it be nice to be in St. Petersburg today? A short kick. He will field it, though. And that is Bobby Milton on the return there, taken down at the 45-yard line. So, But they stay in their territory, and we'll see what happens here. 546 remaining, 7-7 the score. And boy, I tell you what, this is Union's chance to uh, come out. They've uh, traded possessions here, no score yet. Number 55, Michael Robinson there, Clinton, South Carolina, the freshman with a good special teams tackle. You make tackles like that. That's a way to get Dan Haley's attention, get some more playing time. This is a big possession for Union College. They've been stopped the last couple of possessions. They've got great field position inside the Cumberland College territory already before they even run a play. This is the kind of possession you need to take it down the field and score. Well, they'll try to give it to Todd Hudson here, and they do, and he gets about a yard out of that one. It looks like he slipped down a little bit on the field. You know, we were down on the field before the game, uh, right after the rain showers. It didn't seem too slippery down there, but it did look like a, Todd just lost his footing there as he's trying to make the cut. Well, you've got a, a little bit of the mess. The umbrellas are out here at the, the field, and 
when the rain starts to come down, the field is going to get a little slick. You may have to have some kind of cleat change or, or just try and dig in more. But when you're trying to make quick cuts on a wet field, sometimes you will slip down and fall. And he was lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage on that one. Just barely out for a yard. And also, when the rain starts to fall, before it starts falling, they might want to get that passing game revved up again. That's right. Lloyd Dollar goes into motion. Harris looking to pass. And he's got a beat on Dollar. But that one nearly intercepted Dante Sweat. He had a beat on it, but that just didn't happen. Sophomore out of Bowling Green knew he had that one in his hands. And uh, Union College, they dodged the bullet on that one. A little bit underthrown. Sweat had a, a great opportunity there to, to maybe pick it off. He does knock it down because Lloyd Dollar was open if the ball was thrown a little bit deeper. That's a tough pass, though. They've got Chris Harris rolling away from his body. When you're making that rolling left and throwing his right-hander, that takes incredible arm strength to do. You would think they normally would have him roll out right. He's rolling left, and you've got to have a strong arm to even make that throw and just couldn't get quite enough on him as Dollar goes into motion again. Third and nine now. They hand off there. That's Todd Hudson breaking tackles and down inside. Flag is down, though. And, and a flag inside on the line A little extracurricular there. business here as well out on the field, something they talked about last year, some unsportsmanlike conduct in this series. And when you've got a heated rivalry, rivalry like this, you would expect it to get heated from time to time. And it did get heated, heated enough to, uh, looks like maybe another flag dropped. I know they've got one flag out there. There is a second flag, and we will look to referee Keith Morgan and his crew to help us figure it all out. The umpire, Rodney Armstrong, head linesman, NS Guy, line judge Mike Black, field judge Ted Hill, and back judge Rick Townsend. Oh, and a double whammy for Union College, a holding. Hold, and an unsportsmanlike conduct. And so a personal, uh, that foul. personal foul. That is no good, and Tuck Woolham is very upset, as you might imagine, the hands on the hips and having uh, some dinner discussions there with Mike Black. Uh, I don't know if he's inviting anybody to dinner right now. Tuck is not happy. He's got his trademark scowl on, but the bad news for Union College is they'll be moved back a long way. You know, it's been a tough year for Union, but Tuck Woolham, other than today, has been all smiles out on the practice field even before the game. He uh, knows Holding that on the offense. Penalty is declined. Dead ball. Personal foul on the offense. That penalty is accepted. Be fourth down. So that puts a Union in a punting situation. As I was saying, Tuck Woolham has been all smiles despite only one win this season, and they know that this is really fun. Uh, that they've just got to play for fun right now. Cumberland College, of course, four and four. Uh, not maybe the season they were looking for, but they're making improvements under Coach Dan Haley. Yeah, they really are. They they had a, a frustrating season last year, the loss to, loss to Union. They followed up with an upset win over Georgetown, and they will play Georgetown again later on this season with uh, them looking for a little revenge, I'm sure. And this is a definitely a non-fake punt situation. You want to boot this away and try and keep them from scoring with 442 left in the quarter and that is not a very good punt no that one shanks goes. it out right out of bounds very short so uh jeremy kerr a little uh shank out of bounds he's disappointed tuck will have a few words for him and that that is not what he wanted out of the situation because cumberland college has some great field position that's something that has plagued union over the past couple of years is inconsistency out of the punting position and you see it not only in small college football but in big college football, if you can have a good punter and good special teams, the kicking game can help you immensely. But you really don't notice it until you don't have it and you get a short punt like that. And they've got the ball on the, looks like about the 43, 44 yard line. And they are also in excellent field position. Union couldn't do anything in that situation. Good field position. Let's see if Cumberland College can. Running out of the eye here, the handoff to Randy Freeman and he is tackled there by the bulk of the Union defensive line. They were all in on that one. And that uh, didn't fool much of anybody. Tony made the only wide receiver they show, and uh, he got some token coverage on that one. <laughs> Randy Freeman coming out of the eye. They're expecting him to call the number, although maybe a good call uh, later on for uh, Tony May, who was standing all alone on the sideline. Uh, maybe later on when uh, Randy Freeman is in the eye that they look to pass to uh, Tony May. Well, when you've got effective running like that, you're certainly set up for some play action later. You can use the run game to set up the pass game. Brandon Union. Duggar on the near side. This one, the handoff to Freeman again. Looking up toward the sideline there, and he is hit out of bounds there by number 22, Don Williams. Also on the stop, Anthony Patrick. Anthony Patrick really Safe. made that play, come, came up and, and stopped him, kept him from juking his way around, and then the... They put him away, put him out of bounds, and that'll stop the clock. 3.50 left here in the first half. 
7-7 the score, as Chip says. It's uh, 350. The Bulldog looking for shelter, as did a lot of people. And uh, Rich, Rich Johnson, Johnson is, down on the field. He's not wet yet, though. He's still he's getting that way. But uh, hopefully he'll bring out the overcoat soon. Uh, the umbrellas continue to uh, pop up here. Looks like uh, Patrick Wiggins will go out of the shotgun again. Tony May, wide receiver this, this area. They bring the blitz. And they the get to the quarterback, pass. but he's able to get it off to Freeman. The swing pass, and Freeman's got some room. There's a flag down. Freeman running for the end zone. Oh, the two big block by Brandon Duggar block. knocks down Don Williams. They're calling touchdown. That is a touchdown, but there is a flag way back on the 49-yard line as the rain begins to fall, and they may rain on this touchdown for Cumberland and College. Arthur Carter telling them to come <laughs> back because this one is not a touchdown. Arthur Carter directing Cumberland College to get back in formation because that was a penalty I, on the 50-yard line. I think Union will accept that penalty with uh, much gladness. And now everybody's scrambling for cover for an umbrella because the rain Illegal is starting to come in the down. Back on the offense, 10 yards from the spot of the foul. Repeat the down. So that's going to bring up third and long. And Arthur Carter, he knew that went all the way, number 65 there. Tuck's trying to get his troops rallied because they know that they're going to try to get uh, back here and try to get something going here before halftime. 3.35 left in the second quarter, 7-7 seven, seven the score. And, boy, a big penalty for Cumberland. A touchdown called back. That's always got to hurt. That, that does hurt very, very much because that's a big momentum, a huge pass play on, on that play. And to have it come back, it, it's very frustrating, especially for the quarterback. They did a good job, Herrett. They did a great job getting it off before the blitz because Wiggins took a big hit on that play with the little swing pass and then Freeman, he shows what you can do in the open field, but he did get a little bit of help from the illegal block, so they will be moved back and a little bit of momentum shift again, maybe. And Third. another flag comes out. This could be a procedure call. It's Patrick Wiggins putting it away down to about the 49, but uh, looks like that one could be a procedure call. And I'll tell you what, John, both teams have had a shot at good field position here the last series for each team. And both teams are right now killing themselves with penalties, especially Cumberland, though. Looks like illegal motion maybe on Chris Harrison. And guess what? They're going to send him back some more because field position, they're about to get the ball back in pretty good field position. They keep going the wrong way, Cumberland College does. Illegal motion on the offense, five yard from the previous spot, repeat third down. Looks like right uh, during the snap, or maybe uh, right after, uh, it appeared that uh, Chris Harrison went into motion much too early. So uh, that's going to be a big penalty for them. They've gone from having a 14 to 7 lead now to having third down and 19 yards. And this is a play, a situation where if you're the Union defense, you do not want to let them get the first down because with 316 left, they could go ahead and score. Wiggins looking uh, to pass here, of course, third and 19. He's going to have to do something, and he has a receiver, and that it looks like number 33, Chris Harrison. Actually, it's going to be number 32, and as soon as I check my roster, I'll tell everyone who that is. That is number 32, Sonny Harrison, the big tight end. He's a junior, but it's not enough for a first down, and that's going to bring up fourth down, and we'll see. Looks like they're going to punt, and that's going to be probably the good call with 2.43 left in the first quarter. Don Williams again back deep to receive. He had a good kickoff return last time. Let's see if he can get a good punt return. That one takes a uh, union bounce there, and they take it down. Looks like to about the uh, near the 40-yard line. 40, we'll say the 40 short of the 40-yard 40, yeah. 40 line. About so 40, about, looks like about the the 46, the 47-yard line. Could be. They could will be. spot it now, and that's pretty good. Or it looks like the 37. Yeah. Two, a little bit shy of the 40. 2.28 left here in the first quarter. It's 7-7 seven to seven as we try to figure out the field position of this ball. And that's going to be, we'll say the 38. How about that? The 38-yard line, first and 10 for Union College. 2.28 left for them to try to get into the end zone, and that's exactly what they're going to do. Chris Harrison to the shotgun here. Lloyd Dollar in motion, and usually when the receive, whoever's gone in motion has been able to receive, but that's not the case. He's in trouble, and he gets it down to Todd Hudson, and he gets about four on that play. A little bit of a pump fake. He looks to the sidelines to see what was going on, obviously looking for a little something different than that. Got some pressure, though, up the middle. Had to get rid of that ball before he, he gets sacked, and as you can see, the umbrellas are out here at Birch Now Field. The rain is coming down, and that will certainly affect the passing game. Todd Hudson, though, having a good game so far, running and receiving. 
it seems that whoever goes into motion so far for Union has been the receiver, but uh, Harris got in a little bit of trouble there. A low snap, he handles it well, and he's throwing long to Quali Rolak, and that one no good. Credit Shane Ashby, the freshman quarterback out of Abingdon, Virginia. He had the uh, stop on that play. Boy, Rolak was down there. It would have been uh, about to the 25-yard line, but all it is is just a long third down. Now third and five for the ball, still on the 43. 148 left in the second quarter. Rolak again looking at the officials for a possibly a pass interference call, but that was just good defense. What Union College is getting is they're getting single coverage on the outside. That play, you know, when, it, when it's one-on-one, -on -one, your receiver's got to make a play. The ball a little bit underthrown. And we still have not heard from Sean Wollum yet. He has Five. not caught a pass. Five wide receivers. I wonder if they're going to pass. It's Chris Harris looking for a receiver, and he is taken down by Chad Price, the linebacker. He's a freshman, the sack there. 5'9", 195 of pure power, and Chris Harris is signed, and that's gonna force Union College to punt. Well, just a great job by Chad Price there coming up. They rolled out, they were looking for one, but they had the coverage, a little bit of a zone there, no single coverage. Couldn't get off to him. He placed that H-back, sort of like Frank Wycheck of the Tennessee <laughs> Oilers. And Wycheck's their leading receiver, and Woolham is Union's leading receiver, but they've done a pretty good job containing him so far today. So Union here forced to punt, fourth and nine, 110 left. They need Todd a better Hudson, punt this time, though. Todd Hudson giving directions out there. Surely Tuck Woolham would not call a fake with one minute. No, he would not. No. So that punt goes away. And this a much better punt. And that one is going to be down by Cumberland College, about the 26-yard line. So 56 seconds left in the second quarter, 56 seconds left to the break. It's 7-7 tie. The rain letting up a little bit. We'll see how that affects the running game, Cumberland College. And I tell you what, Tuck Willem got on Kerr a little bit, Jeremy Kerr, after that last punt, a shanked out of bounds punt, and this time he does the job, puts them down because with just under a minute left, 56 seconds, you don't want to give Cumberland anywhere near the 50 in field position. He does a good job there. And Tuck's not yelling at him anymore. <laughs> that's right, and that's the main thing for him. Patrick Wiggins now in the shotgun. He'll probably try to grind this out. We'll see what happens. Well, no, Patrick Wiggins is looking to pass, and uh, he throws that one just short. The attended receiver, Tony May, but not really close to anybody as it hits the ground. Wade Davis there uh, nearing 52 seconds now. 7-7, seven, seven, the score still, and the rain thankfully letting up for a while. We'll see if Union or if uh, Cumberland College is going to try to uh, get into field goal range or if they'll just try to grind it out here in the last 52 seconds. Uh, the only bad thing about this is that they're going to the shotgun. They've not really run effectively out of the shotgun today. There's the inside handoff to Harrison, and he knocks down the official who may be injured, and then everybody <laughs> runs over the official, and he's not getting paid enough for that job. No. <laughs> yeah. The paycheck needs to have a little extra after the end of that day. He was, however, involved in the tackle. Does he get credit for that? The we'll, fans don't look too sympathetic, though. No, we'll put him down for a Mid-South Conference uh, half a tackle there. 27 seconds, clock still running. That's going to bring up third and 10. Union College, perhaps we'll call a timeout here, trying to force a punt if they can stop That them. they will. Here's now a watch replay this of that. This, uh, the ref, like you said, Chip, not getting enough... Uh, pay on this day actually uh, throws the good block there we'll give him that and then he gets trampled on <laughs> but uh, he's okay thank goodness and uh, we've got 24 seconds left in the, in the uh, second quarter 7-7 seven, seven to score John he's the only guy without pants out there and certainly didn't look like much fun for him but he is okay he's tough these officials are tough they are they are tough if nothing else and we're gonna see a situation third and eight Union looking to get the ball back here that's why they call the timeout So we'll see what happens here. 24 seconds, as we said, left into the uh, halftime break. 7-7 seven, seven the score. Union College marches back out on the field. We'll see uh, it's third and eight now for Cumberland College, so we'll see if they'll just try to grind it out and punt it away. Certainly, or if they'll go for the first down. Nah, certainly Cumberland in, in this situation wants to put the ball on the ground. The problem is Union still has two timeouts left. They're going to probably get the ball back, unless, of course, Cumberland can get the first down here. Then they'll probably just kneel on the ball and be happy to go into the locker room at halftime with a 7-7 seven to seven tie. But if Union wants to get the ball back, they need to stop him here. They'll call a timeout and try and get the punt, try and get something to happen when you run five wide receiver sets. Hey, anything can happen. Anything can and will happen. Wiggins this time under center. Looks like they're going to come out of the eye here. The pitch over to Chris Harrison. 
Harrison looking for a lane. He's gotten a and little Harrison, bit. Maybe uh, Harrison helps them out by going out of bounds. You have got to cut that ball inside to keep the clock running, force Union to, to run a timeout because now there are 18 seconds left. They're going to get a punt. If they fair catch or wherever, it depends on how deep the punt is. They can get a few plays off, and they are not confined to just throwing to the sidelines. They can throw down the middle with two timeouts, maybe get into field goal range. I would think that that would be their goal. Is It looks like Don Williams is back again to receive the punt. and This is a really a situation where Tony Irvin needs to come up with a big kick. I don't know if you want to kick this one out of bounds, maybe to avoid the, the return. They well, won't. He's angling that one well, straight through, and that is... Don Williams on the uh, carry here, and he is going to get taken down. Oh, it looks like he dropped the ball, but maybe he was down. I think he was probably down already. And uh, some more extracurricular activity. We thought that might happen. It's happened twice now. Shake it off. Ten seconds left. Well, seven, the referees seven. have made tackles, and they've also done a good job keeping the game under control. No real problems so far. Last year, some of the players expressing a little unsportsmanlike behavior on both teams, but you've got a heated rivalry. You've had some coaches that have, that have changed sides for Cumberland, Coach Nemish and Coach Blake. They used to be with Union and at Union College. Uh, defensive coordinator Brian Hill used to be at Cumberland. But Union has 10 seconds left, maybe time for two plays throw the ball deep down the field. This is a quarterback's nightmare, though, because you get that cheap interception that kind of mars your stats. That's right. Well, he's going to go ahead and tuck it, and looks like he was looking to pass, but he knew he was past the line of scrimmage there, and he gets out of bounds with two seconds left on the clock. You mentioned Tony Nemish there, the, the coach for uh, Cumberland College. He former quarterback at Kentucky Wesleyan, later transferred to uh, Western Carolina, where Tuck Willem was. And Tuck Willem has done a great job here. He's the third winningest coach at Union College and moving up that ladder, not so much this year because they've only picked up one win, but they're certainly in a position in a game to get another one today, tied at seven. Two seconds left. Maybe you go for the Hail Mary right here, see what kind of arm the freshman quarterback has. Chris Harris, a freshman out of Indianapolis, Indiana. Four touchdowns since becoming the starter three games ago. He's going to work from the shotgun. Just All out. Five wide receivers. Trips to the right, two to the left. The horn sounds. He's looking. He's going to go ahead and throw it down. That one just short of Todd Hudson, and that will end the half. 7-7 seven, seven the score. Union and Cumberland tied here at Burst Now Field. We're back after this. <laughs> it's holding the half's over. Fall is truck season, and Cardinal is East Kentucky's truck capital. When you shop Cardinal Chevrolet and Cardinal Dodge, you're shopping the largest inventory of trucks in the mountains. At Cardinal, we have over 125 four-wheel drives available. Want an extended cab? We've got over 60 to choose from. A big inventory means big savings. We've got just the truck you're looking for for less. Cardinal Chevrolet Cadillac on Highway 15 south of Hazard, and Cardinal Chrysler Plymouth Dodge on East Main Street in Hazard. Cardinal is East Kentucky's truck capital. You know, all I wanted was a checking account. So were all the questions. The lady said the more she knows about me, the easier it is to give me a checking account that fits. And I think, terrific. Because let's face it, <laughs> I've always been a little hard to fit. Treating you better, it's what we do best. First National Bank and Trust. Some days at the office can be very rough. Or sometimes, just when you're enjoying a friendly game with the guys, you can suffer a nagging sports injury. Lexington Diagnostic Center has a new MRI machine that's ideal for orthopedic and sports-related injuries. It's a teammate of their patient-friendly open MRI machine. So if your doctor orders an MRI, ask to come to Lexington Diagnostic Center. We'll get you back at the game. What's behind the biggest truck event of the year? One Tough Truck. And during the One Tough Truck event, your Chevy dealer's got a whole lot of tough trucks. The most dependable, longest-lasting trucks. Get a Chevy S10 for $189 a month or take $750 cash back. Get this Chevy full-size, now just $209 a month. So what's behind a Chevy? It ought to be you. During the One Tough Truck event, your Chevy is ready. Get it at your local Chevrolet dealer. Today at the Kentucky Lottery's Powerball Development Lab, a ball of extraordinary proportions has escaped. 
we were increasing the minimum jackpot to $10 million and adding a cash option when it overpowered us and broke through the wall. The rogue ball has left a trail across the state. Dr. Newby has this advice for anyone encountering the ball. Play it. New Powerball, $10 million minimum jackpot and a new option to take cash. Somebody's going to win. Might as well be you. Well, if I had money, I'd tell, tell you what I'd do. Go downtown, buy a Ford truck or two. Or pay, pay, you buy a Ford truck. Go and pay, you buy a Ford truck. I'm going to buy me a Ford truck and cruise it up and down the road. I'm going to buy me a Ford truck and cruise it up and down the road. Fifteen hundred cash back on Ranger at your best quality Ford dealer. Back to a damp Burt's now filled. Seven seven the score at halftime. Uh, a clean first half anyway. A seven seven score. No uh, turnovers in the first half. No turnovers. A pretty well played first half. Union had a chance to go up on their second possession, but Cumberland stopped them down in the about the 13, 12 or 13 yard line on a fourth and three play. Cumberland behind the, the running of Randy Freeman and the quarterback Wiggins have, have done a good job. We're back where we started here, seven to seven at halftime. Of course, Rich Johnson has been down on the field for the whole first half. Rich is down there right now and has more. Well, yeah, the last two years, this has been a one point game. Uh, the kicking game basically deciding it and here at halftime, we're tied. So we got another nip and tuck affair. And it all started with Chris Harris, the 10 yard touchdown run on Union College's first drive. They just Drove right down the field, 80 yards. But ever since then, the offense has kind of struggled since then. And then we saw, you know, Dan Haley said we need to have some nice long drives. Well, they had two 11-play drives in the first half. On their third possession, Randy Freeman capped off an 11-play drive with a one-yard touchdown run. And he's the one we're going to talk about here. He went over 1,000 yards in the season, you know, here on the second possession. He went over 1,000 yards. And he's leading the Mid-South Conference in rushing. And earlier this week, we talked to the coach about the Cumberland College running back. Well, he's an extraordinary guy, and he gets all beat up, and you think he can't play, and then he plays like Tarzan. And he's done that all year, and uh, I think he's earned the respect of everybody that we've played, and I think he's a candidate for postseason honors. Ideally, I just want to get about four or five yards of carry, and if that means giving the ball about ten times and got about five, ten yards of carry here and there, and if I can just get the ball every time, on a drive, they'll be following me, but I don't care as long as we get the ball to the end zone. That's all that matters. If I do it, that's great. Somebody else does it, that's just as great. As long as we win, as long as we put points on the board. And Freeman's had a good first half, and other than you know his rushing and that one uh, drive by Union College, the first drive of the game that gave him the touchdown, there's, there's been lots of punting. Union turned it over on downs once, and then there's been nine punts. As for the weather, you know, it rained here a little bit. Uh, the umbrellas were put up for a little while. Other than that, the rain has stopped. You know, the field still looks like it's in pretty good condition. And uh, you know, tie score seven seven. Now back up to you guys. We had a pretty interesting second half coming up. All we right, thanks a lot, Rich Johnson. Seven to seven. You are correct. We are at halftime. The rain's still coming down a little bit. You see the ponchos, the rain gear. The umbrellas are not up right now. A light drizzle, but as you said, the field is in pretty good shape. Randy Freeman over 100 yards. We'll talk about that. The rest of the halftime stats after this break. Fall is truck season, and Cardinal is East Kentucky's truck capital. When you shop Cardinal Chevrolet and Cardinal Dodge, you're shopping the largest inventory of trucks in the mountains. At Cardinal, we have over 125 four-wheel drives available. Want an extended cab? We've got over 60 to choose from. A big inventory means big savings. We've got just the truck you're looking for for less. Cardinal Chevrolet Cadillac on Highway 15 south of Hazard, and Cardinal Chrysler Plymouth Dodge on East Main Street in Hazard. Cardinal is East Kentucky's truck capital. One good reason to buy a boat. Tracker's got 500. That's right. Buy any one of 15 Bass Tracker or Nitro packages, and we'll give you a $500 Bass Pro Shops gift certificate absolutely free. Pick out your new boat and choose from thousands of products. Anything from the famous Bass Pro Shops catalogs. What are you waiting for? Get on down to your Tracker dealer now. Come see Rex and Dave at Southeast Marine in Corbin. 528-2628. Okay, hold on, hold on. We'll just come back tomorrow, okay? All right, I got one idea. The StarTac cellular phone from Motorola. Hello, Tom's Toys. This is Tom. Hi, listen, are we too late? Sir, I'm sorry, we closed the safe. We're right outside the door. I was just wondering if... StarTac. Good things happen. Now hold on, I'll be right out. Because it's always with you. Motorola. 
Kentucky Cellular and Appalachian Cellular, leading the mountains in cellular communication. What's behind the biggest truck event of the year? One Tough Truck. And during the One Tough Truck event, your Chevy dealers got a whole lot of tough trucks. The most dependable, longest lasting trucks. Get a Chevy S10 for $189 a month or take $750 cash back. Get this Chevy full size now just $209 a month. So what's behind a Chevy? It ought to be you. During the One Tough Truck event, your Chevy is ready. Get it at your local Chevrolet dealer. Back at Birch Now Field, the score is 7-7, Union College and Cumberland College. We have halftime statistics and a clean first half. No, uh, no turnovers. No turnovers so far. Both teams have taken care of the ball. We're interrupting your dinner time. We are. Let's take a look at those first half stats. Yards rushing for Union College, 76 on the ground. The major culprit there, Todd Hudson, who has 32. Dwayne Crenshaw, 27. Chris Harris has scrambled for 17 yards. Passing, 94. Chris Harris, the only quarterback in there, as I wanted to say Todd Hudson was in there on a punt, but I was wrong. 9 of 21 for 94 yards. His long, 25 yards. Receiving, they have receiving. No turnovers there, like John Lewis alluded to before. Those are the stats for Union College. What about Cumberland College? Well, they have been able to move the ball very effectively on the ground. Well, they have to because they don't really throw the ball Patrick Wiggins, 2 of 5 through the air for 12 yards, but the yards rushing 169 yards on the ground already, led by Mid-South Conference's leading rusher, Randy Freeman, 15 carries for 101 yards, one touchdown, his long is 38 yards, and he does have a one-yard touchdown. Patrick Wiggins, the quarterback, exceptional scrambling, 6.2 yards to carry, six rushes for 37 yards, Chris Morrison, six rushes for 20, Jeremy Simpson is 4 for 11. Those are the halftime stats. When we come back, guess what? We'll be a few minutes closer to the second half. Union College, Cumberland College, all tied up at seven here at Birch Now Field. Cumberland College is a very special educational institution. At Cumberland College, we believe that we should attempt to meet our students' needs holistically through academics, spiritual growth, community service activities, extracurricular activities, and athletics. Many of our Cumberland students participate in our athletic program, which has long been recognized as one of the best small college programs in the nation. Cumberland competes in 11 sports for women. And 12 sports for men. A co-ed cheerleading squad are also an integral part of our athletic program. Our athletic teams have won national and regional championships and are well known throughout the nation. To help our students meet their financial needs, Cumberland offers many forms of financial aid. 90% of our students receive some form of financial aid. One special scholarship program is the Bert T. Combs Leadership Grants. You may qualify for a Burt T. Combs Leadership Grant at Cumberland College in Williamsburg, Kentucky. Students from Bell, Clay, Floyd, Harlan, Jackson, Knott, Knox, Laurel, Leslie, Letcher, Lincoln, McCreary, Owsley, Perry, Pulaski, Rockcastle, Wayne, and Whitley counties in Kentucky are eligible to apply for the Combs Grants, which, when combined with other types of financial aid, may pay your full tuition costs for up to four years. Contact your high school guidance counselor or contact us at 1-800-343-1609 to find out how to apply for the Combs Grants. Cumberland College, more than you imagine. This is one of the most important people in my life, my father. You'll never appreciate a picture more than when a person you love disappears to Alzheimer's, a disease that robs millions of their memories and their ability to think. If you think it can't happen to you, picture this. Right now, 19 million Americans have a loved one with Alzheimer's disease. Join me in this year's Alzheimer's Association Memory Walk. You'll help thousands of families preserve the pictures in their minds, memories. Union College hasn't cornered the market on fall in the mountains of southeast Kentucky, but these hills and hollers are Union's lifeblood, 
The college was started in 1879 to educate the students from the surrounding communities. Today, the Barberville College offers a world of experiences, many of them outside the traditional classroom. Hi, I'm Jessica. And I'm Wendy. And, and we're, we're the Wilderness, Wilderness Girls. You know, Wendy, fall's a great time to get out and just enjoy the mountains. Where else could you go hiking, whitewater rafting, caving, and canoeing? And with your professors. Union is just one big family. But there's more to Union than the outdoors. We have great classroom experiences, service opportunities, plus musical and theatrical performances, just to name a few. The college experience at Union is so much more. Service at Union College is a way for me to explore who I am and what I believe. It is also a way for me to explore my opportunities and to challenge my beliefs while giving to others. offers students the freedom to explore their own visions for the future in creative ways. Union College has given me all kinds of opportunities to meet the people that I've wanted to meet and do the things that I've wanted to do. When I first came here, I thought practice and class would consume all areas of my life, and I wouldn't have time to do all of the interesting things that are, you know, we can do around here. Yeah, I figured we would spend most of our time in the gym or studying but we haven't. We've learned to do things, just play the guitar and meet a lot of new friends. Hi, I'm David Joyce. What we have at Union is a very special place put together by some very special people. Our program is of the traditional liberal arts nature, but it's also a, has a unique aspect as we incorporate learning inside and outside the classroom. We take advantage of the environment that you see about you, but we also incorporate the program into the culture and the service of the area. But most importantly, what we're about at Union is helping students create a vision for themselves, for what they want to become and what they are becoming. Back at Birchnaw Field, the score at halftime is 7-7. Chip, it's been a pretty clean game, as we said so far. A couple of uh, scuffles out there, no turnovers, uh, a lot of good uh, offense from both teams. And you know, uh, Coach Tuck Willem of Union and Coach Dan Haley of Cumberland, they have something in common. Not only are they coaching the opposing teams, but both of them are Pineville natives. Yes, they are, and they were both actually coached by the same high school football coach, our own Rich Johnson, down on the field right now with that man. Rich Johnson, who do you have with you? Well, my special guest down the sideline here is Bill Adams, former Pineville coach. Started coaching back in 1955, a long time ago. Talk a little about your coaching career there. Well, I started in 55 and stayed until I retired after 23 years, which I was the principal at that time, and then I got back in it after the Bishop boy got hurt. So I have a total of 26 years, actually, coaching. Talk a little about uh, two of the players you had in your team. Dan Haley, head coach at Cumberland College, and Tuck Wollum, head coach at Union College. Right, I had Danny in the, in the 50s, and I had Tuck in the 70s, by almost 20 years apart. And Danny went to UK and played ball, and Tuck went to Eastern and played ball. And starting last year was their first game to meet each other on the gridiron down at Cumberland. So I'm fortunate or unfortunate, whatever it might be, to have two college coaches now that I coached in high school now coaching against each other. Now what's that like to, to come out and see them coaching against each other knowing you had coached them yourself? Well, uh, really, most of it is whoever wins, I can get on the other coach and tell them they didn't do the right thing. But uh, last year now the game ended up regular time and, and, and tied and they had to go into overtime. And Union won on a field goal line with no touchdown. But anyway, uh, it was a good ball game like this one is, so uh, I don't have any feelings one way or the other, really. I guess two years ago, uh, you know, they, uh, or last year, you know, they missed extra point in overtime, yeah. wins it the year before, Union wins it on a field goal. They've had some pretty exciting games these last two years. Right, they have. And like I say, last year was the first year that uh, Danny was at Cumberland, so this is the second year they've coached against each other. Right now, Tuck has one and zero against it. Now, did they, they ask for any advice from you? Uh, did Dan Haley come to you when he got the head coaching job here? No, no. I, I don't see Danny too much because he's living in Williamsburg. 
And uh, Tuck, now I see all the time, he still comes to the Pinewood games and everything. So I see him quite frequently. We, we talk a little bit, and I come down and watch him practice occasionally. So we're, we're uh, nothing that I... Uh, Doing right now, Danny's doing a whole lot to what I did now, running around the end, running the eye and everything. And Tuck's gone to this uh, fast track thing about throwing the ball and, and successful so far, I think. And what do you think about that offense? This is something they didn't really have back in the day, back when you coached. Uh, you know, he decided the team needed to make a change. The offense wasn't getting the job done. Here, the last few games are averaging in the high 300s, you know, 385 yards the last three games. Oh, what, do you, what do you think about this offense? Is it something we're also seeing up there at UK? Well, uh, no, it's a good offense. Uh, I, I think you have to mix maybe a little more running into it, but now, uh, back when I was coaching, I tried to pass a little bit more than what a lot of the coaches do. I never did have just the power type, you know, offense to where you just run the ball three, three yards in a cloud of dust, so I always tried to pass a little bit, but I used to slot eye like what he's using some Danny and uh, and he's done a pretty good job on passing but uh, Tuck's done a great job I mean to transfer his entire offense after playing four games and then he changed to this offense that he is now so he's done a tremendous job you know because that's hard you practice during the spring trying to do one thing and you start your season trying to do one thing and then you change it after four or five games that's hard all right, thank you, Bill Adams, the former Pineville coach, joining us. We appreciate that. We'll now send it back up to Chip and John. All right, Rich, glad to see uh, Bill Adams out here. Lots of Pineville connections at this Union Cumberland game. 224 till kickoff for the second half. Union College, Cumberland College tied at seven. Why do I keep taking the plunge? Really, darling. How else am I going to get this hot, tasty au jus onto all this tender, juicy roast beef? Arby's French Dip Sub fulfills all my needs. I can even get it with Swiss if I'm in the mood. It is true love. And best of all, it doesn't require a prenuptial agreement. You can go anywhere and get filled up, but you can only get the French Dip Sub at Arby's. something tough enough for me. How about last year's lease price on this year's tough Tacoma trucks? You can lease an equipped Tacoma for just $129 a month. Or lease a number one selling compact 4x4 well-equipped for just $189 a month. We're holding the line on truck prices. But hurry, this special Tacoma lease offer ends November 3rd. See your Toyota dealer. He's there to help you get more truck for less every day. Well, if I had money Cash back on Ranger at your best quality Ford dealer. If you've ever needed one good reason to buy a boat, Tracker's got 500. That's right. Buy any one of 15 Bass Tracker or Nitro packages, and we'll give you a $500 Bass Pro Shops gift certificate absolutely free. Pick out your new boat and choose from thousands of products. Anything from the famous Bass Pro Shops catalogs. What are you waiting for? Get on down to your Tracker dealer now. Come see Rex and Dave at Southeast Marine in Corbin, 528-2628. Seven to seven, the score. We're ten seconds away from kickoff. Cumberland College will have the ball. Quickly, Chip, what do you think we'll, we'll see here in the second half? Well, I, I think Cumberland wants to establish a little bit of momentum, just like Union did to start the game off. They'd like to take this opening kickoff right down the field and take the lead here and grab the momentum early in the second half, establish that running game. They've done a great job running it today. Union has got to try and get that passing offense back. They've thrown the ball 21 times, only completed nine. They threw 33 times a week ago, I believe 43 or 44 the week before that. So they're certainly on pace to, to put it up 41 or 42 times again. But the rain has started to fall, and it, it's coming down a little bit heavier than it, than it was before. It's not just a light drizzle. People are starting to run for cover. The umbrellas are out. The bands have stopped playing, and Cumberland's going to get the ball, and they certainly want to take it down and score right here and establish the momentum. As we said in the pregame, weather always a factor, it seems like, uh, when Union and Cumberland get together. 
Seven to seven the score, as you can see there on your screen, and Cumberland College will have the ball first. We'll see how the rain affects the passing game of Union College, but first we're gonna see if Cumberland College can uh, grind it out. We thought Union had Big Mo on their side there early as they uh, took the first drive for a touchdown. Cumberland held tough a couple of times, then scored a touchdown themselves. So uh, let's see what happens here in the second quarter as the, or the second half as the rain continues to fall and here's the kick. Really, John, in retrospect, that early decision not to try for the field goal, and that's a short kick by Union. Doesn't pay off because they're now tied. They could have been up 10-7. I know the offense was going well, but you look back at the first half, and that's a, a situation where maybe they could have put some more points on the board. And the rain is really coming down pretty heavy right now, and it's a lot cooler. We're, we're feeling the wind here a little bit in the broadcast booth, and the uh, the temperature is dropping outside with that rain. I, I certainly don't think we're... We're in snow. We've got uh, two of our weathermen with us, MK Combs and Tony Brown. They might know a little something about this since Tony's here. Maybe El Nino is kicking <laughs> up a bit. Looks like El Nino is rocking today. Patrick Wiggins under center out of the eye. It's Randy Freeman dotting the eye again. It's Randy Freeman taking the pitch here, running toward the sideline, and he is tackled there. Number seven on the uh, on the uh, tackle there is Anthony Patrick. Number 97 is Keith Fields. First time we've heard his name, the senior out of Dalton, Georgia. Keith Fields really the, the anchor on their, their defensive line, the only returning starter. They had a great defensive line last year. Lost Don Vandegrift, Jay Fanning. Actually, Coach Vandegrift is now on the staff. Jay Fanning is actually coaching at Knox Central High School. Arthur Carter has now moved back to the uh, defensive line. They had a great defensive line this year. He's the stalwart. He's the leader of the defense out there on the line. They will pitch it. They will try and keep it, though. Not a good idea to pitch right there because with that ball getting wet, Things get slippery and the ball bounces funny. You're starting to see clumps of dirt kicked up. The field conditions, if it keeps going down like that, they will deteriorate quickly. Looks like a Steve Means uh, looking to get out there. And you're right, uh, this ball is getting very slippery right now. This might be the, the time we see lots of uh, handoffs, not a lot of pitches from Cumberland College. Actually, Jay Fannin is actually just walking around down on the field. He has no umbrella. He needs no umbrella because he is a tough guy. And uh, he looks like he'd like to be out there right now. He's kind of walking around with a scowl on his face, hoping his defensive teammates can come up with a stop. Wiggins looking to pass, and he is in trouble. He breaks one tackle there, pointing out his blockers, trying to get some kind of yardage out of this, and he does as he goes out of bounds. Finally, Wade Davis there is to knock him out of bounds, but not before it appears that he may have the first down. I tell you what, he's got the first down and more. It looked like everybody on that play had trouble with their footing, except for Wiggins, he did a good job moving and, and outmaneuvering those big defensive linemen, and certainly he ha has the advantage when it's maneuverability question. If he can keep from them getting his, their hands on him, he's going to have the advantage, and he's done a great job running the ball, scrambling when, when they really haven't had anything because the coverage has been there, but it's just broken down, and you've got to give him credit for just being a, a good, pure athlete, able to make those plays happen. They're over midfield now on the 48-49 yard line. Looking to move into Union College territory, the pitch to Randy Freeman. He gets a good run out of this one. Looks like he gets about six or seven out of that one. As the clock runs down, 13-14 here left in the third quarter. I tell you what, there's nothing Coach Dan Haley and his team would like more than a long drive to start this second half, and ending with a Cumberland College touchdown. And right now they're making good yardage. He gets about four, it looks like about five to six yards on that. They will call it second down and five, give him five on that. The ball spotted on the 43-yard line in Union College territory. And when you're running the ball so well, just give it to Freeman or let Wiggins run around and scramble, maybe a quarterback roll. That one, the handoff inside. And boy, Steve Means, he uh, really took a hit there late on. Uh, he's down and slowly getting up there. Everybody's okay, but... Uh, they hand off inside there, nothing doing against Union College defense. Uh, Cumberland has had great success on the ground, 169 yards rushing in the first half. That play they have not had any success with. The belly plays, the cheerleaders are scrambling for cover now. They've got their ponchos on, but may get a little bit too rainy. There's no need to be out on the wet track where you're going to possibly get injured trying to do kicks and things. But that has been the play they've been able to stop on the, on the run. It's going to set up a... Third down and three play. Third and three with 12 minutes left. It's Patrick Wiggins under center. And I think the cheerleading staff has a trainer. The pitch to uh, Randy Freeman here looking for the first down. And he's they do a good job out of stringing bounds, it out. But, yeah. but he gets the first down and 
Tuck has his hat off again. He's yelling at, at number seven, Anthony Patrick, trying to get him to, to make the tackle to come up and get him. He missed him, and that'll be another first down for Cumberland College. They're putting together quite an effective drive here to open the second half. Shot another first down, and they are far now into Union College territory on it. Looks like about the 35-yard line exactly. Grinding out the yardage and grinding out the clock. Of course, uh, Cumberland College, they uh, kept the... Uh, the clock running, they actually held the ball longer than uh, Union College. Union liked to pass, of course. This will be Patrick Wiggins in the uh, shotgun again. It's Tony May, the wide receiver on the, uh, and it looks like Tony C uh, Tony May is going to be the intended receiver, but nothing doing on that one. Patrick Wiggins throws that one out of bounds before he's knocked down. And on the coverage there was number 22, Don Williams, the junior out of LaGrange, Georgia, 5'10", 185, cornerback. 11.40 left in the third quarter, 7-7 the score. Second and 10 for Cumberland College as they look to get it back into the end zone. Union's defense did a good job right there. Cumberland's really had not much success at all throwing the ball, throw deep into double coverage. Lucky that that ball was out of bounds because that's interception, throwing into coverage like that with Don Williams back. The uh, hand up the middle, that one is Steve Means again, close to a first down. He'll probably get, looks like, maybe seven out of that one. 11.30, the clock continues to run, 7-7 seven, seven the score. And Union College hoping for a big defensive stop on this drive. Third and four ball on the 29-yard line. Well, the rain continues to come down here. But, Looks uh, like it's lightening up just a little bit, which is <coughs> good news for Union College if you want to throw the ball. But Cumberland having great success now, right now, putting it on the ground and another big third down conversion for them. Hand off to Randy Freeman, and don't know if he got the first down yardage out of that one. That will bring out the change. We'll see what happens. This could be all according to the spot. It looks, looks like it's going to be down. a little bit short on that. That'll set That's up a, a fourth down and perhaps one or, or two yards, and you've got to think that with the field conditions like they are, that would be a very long field goal. They're probably going to go for this. So looks Union, the defensive unit, a big play, the sidelines, Waving their head, they want the fans to get up, yell, make some noise. John Lewis is in the booth now, right now, raising the roof. <laughs> Wiggins in there, under center. Fourth and three to go. The fake, the play action. He's got a receiver, and he's got the first down and maybe more. Finally gets down inside the 10-yard uh, line. That is number 32, the big tight end from Lexington, Kentucky, Sonny Harrison. I tell you what, that's a great play on a, a short drive like that with with just a little bit of yardage to get on a fourth and two or so. They go to the play action, they, they hit the tight end, Sonny Harrison, and he does a good job picking that ball out of the air and, and making a great gain out of it. And they are all the way down to, it looks like, the five yard line. So inside, definitely the red zone here, down about this, looks like the uh, five, looks like the six, we'll call it five. First and five now, first and goal, 10 minutes left. And Cumberland looking to score here. The pitch out to Randy Freeman. Randy Freeman running around the left side into the end zone. He stretches out, and he's got the touchdown. 13-7 the score, and boy, oh boy, did Anthony Patrick want that tackle in the worst way. He's getting up, shaking his head. He thought he had it. Also, John Fay there on the coverage. I tell you what, that's exactly what we said that Cumberland College wanted to do to come out to start the second half. Uh, good drive over five minutes. To start the second half, they cap it off with the, the touchdown. And if you're Dan Haley, that's exactly what you wanted your team to do. You also want your team to convert, though, on the extra point. Mike which is Donnelly. What Mike Donnelly will try and do here. Mike Donnelly, the freshman kicker, going for the extra point attempt here. That one is up, and it is perfect. Good. Splits the uprights. 14 to 7. Cumberland College takes the lead. 9.57 left in the third quarter. The rain is let up, but the Union College defense. Maybe let up a little bit there as Cumberland College give it to them. They What a great drive, a sustained five-minute drive. And they're in there for the touchdown, 14-7 the to score. That's something we talked about in the, in the open, John, is the fact that Union has given up a lot of yards on the ground so far, and that was someplace Cumberland was going to test them. They've done a good job at some point stopping the run, but right now they have it, and Rich Johnson has more from down on the field. Well, yes, the rain has let like up. Uh, no one has been changing cleats just yet. The, the field kind of being tore stand. up a little bit, but they have yet to make the change to, to the longer cleats, and it's, it's all execution. You get those fourth downs. It's me versus you. I'm going to prove I'm better than you. We saw it in the second possession of Union's first, in the first half, Union's second possession. They went for it on fourth down. 
were unable to convert here in this last drive. Cumberland College goes for it on fourth and three, and Wiggins connects with Sonny Harrison. The next play, the five-yard touchdown run by Randy Number Freeman. 13, that, now they have the 14-7 the lead. Thanks a lot, Rich Johnson and Kitty. Certainly don't like water, John Lewis. <laughs> Another 11-play touchdown scoring drive for Cumberland College. Their first one was 75 yards. This last one, 67 yards, five minutes and three seconds. It took off the clock, 14 to seven, capped off by the Randy Freeman five-yard run. That's exactly what you want if you're Dan Haley. Now, the momentum shifts and the pressure is on that Union offense to try and get something done. They will try to answer with Chris Harris, but first back deep to receive here is number 10, Todd Hudson, and we'll see what happens with him. That great reception uh, receiving a return earlier in the uh, first half. We'll see what happens now. Also, uh, back to receive is uh, number 20, Lloyd Dollar. That's and a short kickoff. That is a short kickoff. Number 42, the big guy. He is looking for uh, some yardage there down on the 32 yard, or down on the 30-yard uh, line. Number 42, that is the big guy, Jeremy Napier, a hometown guy, Barberville, Kentucky, Knox Central, big fullback, 5'10", 220 junior. And of course, his nickname is the big guy. <laughs> the big guy, as we like to call him. So that's going to bring up first down for Union College, ball on the 30-yard uh, line. Chris Harris going back to work, the freshman out of the Indianapolis, fifth in individual offense in the Mid-South Conference, adding more today. He had a touchdown today. We'll see what happens with this drive here. They will go to Crenshaw, back up the middle again, off the right tackle. He picks up about five or six yards there, so that's a good run with the rain starting to come down. Field conditions a little wet, the ball a little slippery. There's going to give it to another big guy and let him rumble through. And maybe Crenshaw's number will continue to be called here, as you said, the... Uh, the field starting to get uh, pretty damp, and we'll see if uh, maybe they will abandon the passing, uh, maybe just for a while. I don't think they'll completely abandon it. Oh, it no. looks like they're going to go back into the shotgun, but you've got to see a little more running with the field conditions to be like they are. Maybe setting up for a draw at second for a ball on 36 here. Chris Harris in the shotgun. No, he's going to pass this ball, and he's looking a little, looking for... Moy Dollar That's right Moy down Dollar. the middle. He splits the defenders, and a great job, a great catch, and a, a good reception of about 30-plus yards. So down they on move. the... Down on the 30-yard line now into uh, Cumberland College territory. That's exactly what they needed. You're right. They did not abandon the uh, the uh, passing at all. And now they're down on the 33-yard line. They'll spot it. First and 10 for Union. Well, Lloyd Dollar, a big game last week with two touchdowns, including one long touchdown reception. And the tailback converted to slot receiver comes up with a big play. That's maybe Union's biggest pass play of the day. Not quite sure on that one, but... They get a first down as the PA announcer chants it out, and they're in business again. Dollar goes in motion here. The play action fake, the floater down, and the reception Tyrone was good, but he was great out, of, reception, but out of bounds. Unless we're playing Canadian League football, <laughs> that is out of bounds. We got a replay on that one. So uh, a yeah. replay of something. We'll check. Here's Ty the reception Tyrone to was, Lloyd Dollar. Yeah, Tyrone was uh, out of bounds there. This one to Lloyd Dollar. Boy, he got way down in there, tried to break a couple of tackles. But that put them in Union College territory, and that's exactly what Union College needed to answer the touchdown that Cumberland College has. Great throw by Chris Harris, feeling the pressure, steps up a little bit in the pocket, finds his slot back, streaking down the field, wide open down the middle. A great reception, holds on to it, and gets them back down into Cumberland College territory. Lloyd Dollar just moving to wide receiver this year. He has split duties between tailback and fullback back in 1996 last season. Harris working out of the shotgun this time. And he is going to go on the quarterback draw. He's got one, one man, man to, to beat, beat and, and he, he is down him. into the end zone. And touchdown for Union College, 13 to 14. Boy, what a call by Tuck Woolen there, the quarterback draw. And you know what? That is a touchdown, 14-13. And great call when you rain comes down. Sometimes you have to go to the ground game, and that's exactly what happens with Chris, Chris Harris. Chris Harris tired of seeing Patrick Wiggins run around for all the yardage. A great job there, not only with the run, but that was a low snap just to feel that. And here's the replay. Look at him go in, one man to beat, and he beats him and dives over number two into the end zone. That's a 33-yard touchdown. Union scores, ties up, but they don't need nearly the amount of time that Cumberland College did. If you're Dan Haley, that's exactly what you didn't want your defense to do. Another low snap. And it's no good, and there the kicking game comes into play. That's right. It's Tim and Philpott, the former Bell County kicker, and the WYMT All-Mountain Team kicker last year as a senior, and 
Tuck is not happy because he knows that these games hinge on the kicking game. Right now, instead of his team being tied up at 14, they still trail after a great drive, 14 to 13. 8.42 here left in the third quarter, and yeah, just talk about Union and Cumberland with uh, extra point kicks in the kicking game. It's uh, hinged uh, for a couple of games here, and uh, they're both, both teams hoping that is not the case uh, this year. Well, the, la the last four seasons, John Lewis, it, it's been that way. It's hinged on the kicking game, whether it be a, a field goal or a, a mixed extra point. The last three years before last year, it was a field goal or the lack of a field goal that won it. Last year was a mixed extra point in overtime. Cumberland, after uh, Ahmad brought Broadnack's 25-yard TD scramble, following a Scott Russell 25-yard touchdown run, they miss the extra point and lose an emotional game by one point. And right now, maybe you're seeing a little bit of a reverse, a little karma coming back, 14 to 13 Union, but with only 8.42 left in the third quarter. There's plenty of time. We're not quite in that dire overtime situation yet. Not quite, 8.42 left in the third. You mentioned Scott Russell now. He is a uh, coach over at Bell County High School. Of course, Bell County last night under coach Tommy Greer won the district title after an 0-4 start. A lot of people thought that uh, Bell County was out of it, but not at all. They win the district title and they're uh, in the playoffs next week. And former Bell County kicker Tim Philpot to kick it off. And after a mixed extra point, a very short kick That'll be fielded by number three, Eddie Robinson. He gets stacked up with a good hit inside. Well, that's a, I believe that's Bobby Milton that was actually on the return for that, the uh, strong safety cornerback, the senior out of St. Petersburg, Florida. But uh, he has stopped pretty quick nonetheless. And that's going to get uh, a first and 10 for uh, Cumberland College in Cumberland College territory. Actually, that was a good call. That was Eddie Robinson, uh, Chip. Again, your contacts come through for us. See what they can do now. It's the handoff up the middle, and number 41 goes deep into the territory. A good 12 or 13-yard gain. Scott Gerardo, the junior out of Lake Tahoe, Nevada, he he was uh, once an offensive line. You know what? Actually, how about if I turn my sheets around here? That number 41 is Steve Means, and Steve Means say, always was, means business. If that was Gerardo, <laughs> that was very Rico Suave, but... Uh, <laughs> We'll save that one Meets for us. Business. We'll <laughs> save that for defense. We'll save that one for defense. Cumberland College on the drive here. First and 10, ball on the 40-yard line. 8-10 left in the third quarter. Union had been doing a good job stopping that play, but the last two times they've run it. The pitch here to yardage. Randy Freeman. And Freeman being dragged down there by John Fay, the senior cornerback. And uh, some pretty good yards there near the first down marker. Just dragging tacklers certainly the advantage with the field conditions goes to the team that can run the ball. So Cumberland College, absolutely, uh, they hinge their offense early on by running the ball. Union College hinges their offense on passing the ball and uh, running may be uh, the way to go right here as the field gets wet. Dan Haley said what they needed, one of the keys to success for, for his team was long touchdown drives. Two 11 play drives so far that have resulted in touchdowns over five minutes each touchdown drive union on the other hand they've gone 70 and 80 yards on their touchdowns the longest drive they've had has been two minutes and 12 seconds the last one <clears throat> taking only a minute and 15 seconds off the clock fortunately they missed the extra point and Cumberland College still holds a very slim one-point lead second down and 11 ball on the 44 yard line as the clock continues to tick 733 left in the third quarter Wiggins again under center, running out of the eye. Randy Freeman dotting the eye. It's Steve Means in the middle there, and the handoff to Means, and he is up the belly. And not much doing here. We'll see if he got to the first down. I don't know if he did, Reggie Chip. Sutton doesn't seem to think so. A little bit of celebration, but Reggie Sutton is wrong on that one. Nope. He didn't really have to get much yardage yeah. on that. They did a good job stopping it, but when it's second and one or two, it's not going to be good enough. And... Keith Morgan says no need to bring the change. That is a first down. And they cross into Union College territory now just over the 50-yard line. Call it the 49-yard line at Union College. So the eye have been successful for them so far. They'll run it out again. Sean Oliver and Brandon Duggar, the wide receivers. But this is a keeper from Patrick Wiggins, and he is down about three yards on the play. Certainly they're letting all of their backs have a chance to run it and means and Freeman and Wiggins has done an excellent job running the ball. He's adding to his yardage with each carry, and Freeman had already eclipsed the 100-yard mark in the first half. So if uh, 
Randy Freeman had not been a running back on this team. It's very possible Patrick Wiggins could be leading this team in rushing right now, but boy, uh, Freeman has really done his job and a little bit more today. And again, he dots the eye as Steve Means there in the middle. Wiggins calling the play at the line of scrimmage. The handoff there to Means. He is hit behind the line of scrimmage. That is number 96, Ryan Kelly, the freshman from Corbin, Kentucky. And he was in there, big 6'1", 250 guy. Well, that's the former Red Hound right there, and he doesn't have to come far to play his college football. Of course, Corbin, during his senior season, undefeated during the regular season, a loss in the second round of the playoffs. But Tuck Willem had recruited him, also recruited Danny Steely, who wound up not coming here, the Corbin, the Corbin Kentucky quarterback. But Kelly with a great job there, getting the initial push through the offensive line and knocking him back for a little bit of a loss. So that brings up third and nine ball on the 44 yard line. And this is going to be a try to be a big stop for Union as Cumberland looks to pass. Wiggins is in trouble. He misses one tackle, breaks a couple more, and he is down for the first down. What another run by Cumberland quarterback Patrick Wiggins. Nothing happening. And he does something himself and he gets the first down. I tell you what, he's picking on Randall Tex Cobb today. That's about the third or fourth time he's had a chance to stop him. He had a chance to stop him for a loss on that play. He's able to juke a little bit. He's got great mobility. He's been doing it all day to all of the defensive players for Union. That's a huge play on third down. Picks up the first down and keeps the drive alive. And they're just running time off the clock, too. That's what they want to do. They're in no hurry once they get the ball. They're letting that play clock run down. About 14 or 15, they will call the play. Checks out the audibles out to his wide receivers. Maybe throw a little quick out here. Tony May, Brandon Duggar out. But the pitch is going to be out to uh, Randy Freeman again. Boy, that's a number that we continue to hear. He's got about three yards on that play. And that one uh, to Randy Freeman as they just continue to grind out the clock. Five minutes left in the third quarter. That'll bring up second down. Well, now it's back to work for Patrick Wiggins, the freshman out of Sewanee, Georgia. He's six. 185, a former defensive back, so he knows all about what these cornerbacks are looking for and what these middle linebackers and outside linebackers are all looking for. So we'll see what happens with this as he is now the quarterback running this Cumberland College run-oriented offense. And again, the run, the handoff this time to Randy Freeman. He is in trouble and nowhere to go because there's Tim Lewis who says, no way, the freshman out of Hartwell, Georgia. He had uh, three sacks this season and he also has a tackle there. So congratulations there, Tim Lewis on the play. Those Lewises know how to make tackles, whether or not they're related to you, John Lewis, which I don't think he is, but still a, a pretty good tackle. No doubt, Tim Lewis, a freshman out of Hartwell, Georgia, uh, one of a number of players from Hartwell on this uh, Union defensive squad. Do you have any relatives in Hartwell, Georgia? Not that I know of, but I'll have a talk with Tim after the game. Maybe to see your family tree and coat of arms. <laughs> We'll compare our coat of arms later on, our family shield. It's a new show here on WYMT, Genealogy with John Lewis. <laughs> the quick out, and looks like it's going to be stopped, but it's not, and that's all the way down, out of bounds for, looks like another first down. It looks like that is number 32. That, the Sonny numbers Harrison. are starting to get dirty. They are. That's Sonny Harrison, the tight end. We heard from him earlier, 6'2", 227 junior out of Lexington, Kentucky. That's another first down. I'll tell you what, it's just they're just absolutely pounding the ball against Union's defense that's uh, beginning to bend a little, but they don't need to break here as they're getting into uh, their own territory. Well, it looks like uh, this may not be first down. They're going to, yeah, it is now. Now it's officially a first down. Looks like that might have been a little bit short, so that does officially bring up first down. 3.39 left in the third quarter. Tuck Willem is not happy about something, whether it's his defense. He's looking at his team right now. The hat was off a minute ago. Scowling, he's exhorting his team for somebody to come up and make a big play. Union, of course, came up with a big play. It was Randall Tex Cobb with the sack that took Cumberland College out of field goal position in the first half. But right now, Union coach Tuck Willem is not happy as he paces up and down the sidelines. Another eye set. It's a couple of uh, wide outs, but that's Randy Freeman. He loses the ball. Boy, the ball is wet out there, and it looks like Union may have recovered. Randy Freeman, always sure-handed in this game, but apparently Union has recovered the ball. Boy, he just got he just got it jarred loose, Chip. And something we just talked about, Tuck on the sidelines wanting somebody to make a play. Somebody goes and makes a play. It Randy was... Freeman, no turnover so far in this game, but the ball a little bit wet. The rain is is not as heavy as it was before, but every time that ball touches the ground, it's going to get wet. The ball is damp, and Freeman just loses it. Looks like he had great yardage, almost enough for a first down again. 
Big Norm Haney there uh, to recover it. And yeah, they were grinding it right toward the end zone, but to go with that, Union College not the best position in the world, but uh, they'll take it because it's a turnover, the first turnover of the game, as you mentioned. And this means that uh, Union College, they will go back to work. Chris Harris this time under center and looking for the play action fake here. He is in trouble and on the run, he pitches it out. Oh, that Ooh. was very, very dangerous as Union College began to, uh, he felt the pressure there from uh, the Cumberland defense. Chris Harris uh, kind of threw a dangerous pass. Uh, lucky he doesn't get that pass intercepted. It just kind of lofted, lofted it up there and you don't want to turn the ball right back over after forcing the turnover, even if you, uh, even if you don't go down and, and score on a 90 plus yard scoring drive, you, you want to keep them from getting the ball back in good field position, at least be able to punt it out, make them work again. Todd Hudson, the lone setback here. Chris Harris under center, showing four wide receivers in this package. That's number 28 uh, in motion there. That's John Burgos, and looks like a loose ball that again. That ball is recovered by College number 21. Chad Price, the uh, fumble recovery boy, just like that. Cumberland College a, gave the ball away, and Chad Price is there, the linebacker, to recover it. Union flirted with the turnover on the interception, and then the pitch out to Todd Hudson, and he never really got a handle on it. The pitch is dangerous in weather conditions like this. Ball is slippery. He thought he had covered the ball, but it was lying below his legs, and Price goes in, dives on it, and that is a big play for Cumberland College. Now, after going through almost three quarters without any turnovers, we've had two on uh, possession of back-to-back. -back. Here's the pitch. It's going to be a rollout on the option and that just one. never gets a handle on it. The ball falls behind him. He sees it, tries to get to it, but Price has it. They'd like to capitalize right now with the touchdown, although Freeman goes nowhere as Don Williams and some of the defensive linemen come up and stop him. Well, as uh, Union College went in, the defense, they certainly didn't hang their head. Andre Washington in there, ready to pump it up. Tuck, Will Tuck Willem telling his team they've got to get a little bit better here. He's telling uh, some of the players down there to uh, get a sure handle on it. He's having a little talk with Todd Hudson right now on the sidelines. The good thing is he's not he, he's not getting up in, in Todd's face and, and demeaning him. He's just putting his arm around and says, look, you know, here's what you did wrong, let's not do it again because there's nothing that frustrates Coach Tuck Willem more than putting the ball on the ground in turnovers, especially in field position like this. Second 11, the ball on the 10. Randy Freeman looking for a place to go and he may have found a place to go. The place is the end zone touchdown, Randy Freeman. And boy, oh boy, just like that, Cumberland College, they had a reversal of fortune and do they take advantage of it? The pitch to Randy Freeman. Yes, they Freeman do. Freeman is in there for the touchdown. Well, that's exactly what Cumberland needed to do. They have the fumble down there after a long drive into Union territory. Union, the defense comes up with a big play, but the offense gives it right back. And that's one of the problems that's plagued Union College over the past season or so. Last year when they were four and six fumbling proved fatal in several games that they could have won. And, and this is a bad situation. It, it's, it's bad enough if you fumble the ball, the extra point, it's good. Mike Donnelly knocks it through. It's bad enough if you fumble, the position where you fumble is even worse when you fumble on your own 15-yard line and give them another opportunity to scoring drive, they don't waste it. 21-13, the score. Cumberland College leading over Union. 2:09 <laughs> left in the third quarter. And Union College are really going to have to get something done right here. Tuck, Tuck Woolham uh, not very happy early on. Let's go down to Rich. Rich, what's it like down there? Well, it's been a, it's been a second half of big plays. Uh, Cumberland College scoring their second touchdown of the second half. Randy Freeman, his second touchdown rush of the second half. And this is something Tuck Willem worried about. He said turnovers. We've had them a lot. That's why we're not winning ball games. That was their 24th fumble of the season, the 16th fumble that they lost. Sure, they recovered Cumberland College's fumble, but then Union coughs it right back up. Cumberland College doing what they need to do, putting the ball in the end zone once again. And also you had the missed extra point on the other side of the field for Union, so they now trail by eight, 21 to 13 here in the third quarter. All right, Rich. I'm going to be Rich's daddy here for a second, tell him to go get a coat on or he's going to have a cold before the uh, UK game tonight. Well, this puts Union College into a predicament here. They're gonna have to uh, try to drive it down the field. 21-13, the score. Cumberland College leading in Union. Needing to get something going here. Well, I think if Rich is gonna be down there without a coat, maybe get him a helmet, some shoulder pads, let him go out on the field. He's probably ready for it already, but he looks, uh, he looks pretty comfortable holding the mic down there. Well, does Union uh, go with the run or do they go with the pass? We'll Here's see what happens here. a replay here. of the touchdown, and look at the good block by number 35, sealing the inside off, and Freeman takes it in for the touchdown, his second of the day, and 
gives them an eight point lead at 21 to 13. Of course, Union is only a touchdown and two point conversion away from tying this, but they need to do something and they need to do something quickly to keep from the, the momentum from completely shifting. Todd Hudson a chance to uh, redeem himself after fumbling the ball early and he is gonna be uh, taken down on this one. Pretty good receiving there for uh, Todd Hudson, a good, pretty good return, but he's down at the 20, so that'll bring up first and 10, and maybe an injury on the field. No, just a lot of people slow getting just up. It's a big pile up because it's kind of wet, and they're making sure everybody gets up without getting hurt. Alvin Lewis there looked like he may have been a little slow getting up. He's gonna trot on over to the sideline, see if he's okay. Well, Union College, they'll be on the 20-yard uh, line here with a chance to to do something here, 157 left in the third quarter. They're trailing 21-13. Chris Harris goes back to work, number 18, the freshman out of Indianapolis, Indiana. Four touchdowns since becoming starter three games ago. Trying to add to that number. And he's already rushed for one today. That's right, Todd Hudson went into motion there and nothing going on that one. The handoff there to Dwayne Crenshaw. He's actually rushed for both of Union College's scores, 28 yards and 10 yards on the ground. And if you're the Cumberland College defense right now, there's nothing you'd like much more than to take Union into three and out and get them to punt because you're going to get good field position, get your offense back the ball because that offensive line, Randy Freeman, the backs, the offense really clicking right now, moving the ball up and down the field on both their possessions. Here in the second half, all their possessions in the second half, they've scored, they've fumbled, and then they've scored again immediately. So they have moved the ball effectively. Union moved the ball pretty effectively. There's the quick out. That's really the first time they've looked at Sean Wollum, their leading receiver this year. Of course, he's the former quarterback and the brother of head coach Tuck Wollum, just a tremendous athlete. And that ball just a little bit low, and he couldn't really get to it. Well, the ball's still wet, as we said, and we wondered if Union College would try to uh, abandon, maybe not totally abandon the pass, but uh, they're going straight to it because it's been so effective for them so far. As you mentioned, Chris Harris, of course, was able to punch it in himself for the last two touchdowns. Uh, both quarterbacks doing some pretty decent running here, but the run-oriented run offense really goes to uh, Cumberland College. Union now back in the shotgun again and maybe looking to pass again. Showing four wide receivers in this package. Todd Hudson, the running back, out at wide receiver. But it's Dwayne Crenshaw just out of reach and uh, not going to happen for them. That will bring up fourth down. That and ball may be getting a little slick, John Lewis, a little bit out in front of his receivers on the past couple of throws. And this is exactly what Union College didn't want to happen. Right after the touchdown, the momentum shifts. They go three and out. We'll punt the ball away with 110 left here in the third quarter. There's nothing Cumberland would like to do is get this ball back. Of course, they'd like to return the punt for a touchdown. But there's nothing they like to do than put the ball right back to the ground game. And a really good effort on the block, but just barely misses it. He calls for the fair catch. So that's Mark Davis there. Uh, he's going to be able to down it near the 50-yard line. And uh, Cumberland College now, they're going to try to get back into Union College territory. 21-13, Cumberland College leads with 103 left in the third quarter. So the ball is going to be placed on, it looks like, the 47, 48-yard line. Patrick Wiggins goes back to work. Tony May out as wide receiver. Randy Freeman dotting the eye. Also on the far side, it's Brandon Duggar at wide receiver. A couple guys not got many looks so far this game. But the handoff there looks like it may have been to Jeremy Simpson or Steve, or, uh, Steve Means. Steve Means has been able to uh, get in there in the middle of that eye. It was Steve Means. The number's getting a little bit dirty out there, hard to read. I tell you what, though, Union has given Cumberland the ball in great field position, just shy of the 50-yard line call, the 49. This is a situation where Cumberland would like to take it right down the field and score, really kind of break the Union defense's back and maybe the spirit. With the kind of offense that Union has, they can certainly put points on the board, but when the ball gets a little wet, it's also a little hard to throw. The pitch out to Randy Freeman again, nowhere to go on that one. And Union's defense holding tough right now. That will bring up second down, third down, third and nine. Union's college, college's defense certainly wants to stop right here give their offense a chance to tie this game up. But you're now into a field position game because even if they do stop Cumberland College, as long as they don't punt the ball out of the end zone, Union's going to be dealing with some bad field position. And that will mark the end of the third quarter. Cumberland <laughs> College on the road, 21 to 13 of the battle for the Brass Lantern. We'll be back right after these messages. 
Fall is truck season, and Cardinal is East Kentucky's truck capital. When you shop Cardinal Chevrolet and Cardinal Dodge, you're shopping the largest inventory of trucks in the mountains. At Cardinal, we have over 125 four-wheel drives available. Want an extended cab? We've got over 60 to choose from. A big inventory means big savings. We've got just the truck you're looking for for less. Cardinal Chevrolet Cadillac on Highway 15 south of Hazard, and Cardinal Chrysler Plymouth Dodge on East Main Street in Hazard. Cardinal is East Kentucky's truck capital. Turning dreams into reality is what we do best. First National Bank of London. Putting people first, helping you reach goals for your family or your business. Whether it's a new home or new equipment, First National Bank's loan officers are ready to help. Anytime, any place. First National Bank of London. Putting you first keeps us first. Well, down the sideline, Tuck Woolham is telling his offensive line, make up your mind, set your mind to it, decide that you want to win this game and protect the quarterback. Meanwhile, the message being preached to the defense is, don't get discouraged, go, don't get discouraged. Go out there and force Ball a turnover. The You're down line. by eight points as we start the fourth quarter. Cumberland. Let's see if the defense can respond. All right, all right, Rich, stay dry down there. Uh, one correction that we'll make here, Chris Morrison is actually number 33. We had Chris Harrison. And that is number 32 for the... Uh, Reception there, and looks like number he is in we'll for the into touchdown. The touchdown. That's Sonny Harrison again. Earlier, he had a big uh, reception to put them down in scoring position on a fourth down deep in their own territory. And now, a great touchdown, 50 yards on the pass play. Really, the first time that their passing has, has looked to go deep, and they go to their tight end. And when you're running the ball a lot, that's a great place to go. They roll them out. Nobody picks up the tight end. Little Ben Coates action. Shannon Sharp points out his block, and actually he's just pointing to the defender, saying, "I'm about to score on you." <laughs> Don Williams there uh, just missed the touchdown saving tackle now, and Donnelly in to uh, kick the extra point here. 27-13 the score. If this one goes up and in, 28-13 would be the score here in the fourth quarter. And Donnelly is money. 14-51 left in the fourth quarter, and just like that. Cumberland College back on the scoreboard again. So Tuck Willem probably not going to be happy about that because he really needed a defensive stop. And Don Williams just, well, he just got burned a little bit there by Sonny Harrison. And he's having a little talk with Don saying a little tighter coverage on the tight end. And you can imagine you'll see that for the rest of the fourth quarter. Well, you, when you're a defensive back, you're not expecting them to send the tight end streaking down the field like that. In fact, on that play, Cumberland College eclipsed their entire passing yardage on one play. Heading into the fourth quarter, Patrick Wiggins was four of eight for 46 yards and 50-yard touchdown there to Sonny Harrison. So more yards passing on that play than they had so far in the entire game. But that's a huge play. And they, what they've done is basically use the run game to set up the pass game and pick their spots to throw and make the big play, really. And that's going to put Union in a tough position now, down 28 to 13 with 14.51 left in the fourth quarter. So that makes this a very important drive. Union really needs to get something going to go down and get some points on the board. Todd Hudson back to uh, receive. Also Don Williams back there. And number 20, Lloyd Dollar, all deep to receive here on the kick. So yeah, you're right. Uh, Union College, they need something out of this. Trailing 28 to 13, 1451 left in the fourth quarter. And the Union sideline a little quiet right now as the Cumberland College sideline now they're going crazy over there, wanting to win and take the Brass Lantern back to Cumberland College. Well, they haven't had the Brass Lantern, and uh, Randy Freeman said the reason why they didn't have a trophy case big enough. Well, right now, he's doing his part to do that. <coughs> 27 carries for 151 yards, three touchdowns. His longest is a 38. And there's another problem on the kick. It looks like it's Lloyd Dollar. He's had his problems holding on to the football this year and last year. That's the second kickoff. He's been a little shaky on handling, and... They're going to be just over the 20, call it the 22 or 23 yard line. Some not great position to start out for a drive. They really need to get something started. Alvin Lewis there on the stop, the strong safety, a freshman out of Titusville, Florida, 6'1, 200 pounds. That'll bring up first and 10 for Union College, trailing 13, tra trailing 28 13. The ball now on the 23 yard line. Donnie Wright, the senior defensive back, said, playing an offense like this that wants to throw the ball. So far, Chris Harris, 10 of 26. Looks like he's only completed one pass here in the second half. 
when they face an offense that likes to throw the ball, the defensive backs really take that as a challenge. They take it personally, and you don't get to face a whole lot of teams like that as the rollout, the fake. The play action and the pass is complete there to uh, number 20, Lloyd Dollar, but uh, minimal gain on that, maybe a one-yard uh, gain on that one. Right now, the defensive backs are doing a good job containing those routes. What they didn't want to allow happen was for Union to throw the ball in the middle. What they've done is they forced them the outside, and, and that route, a negligible gain, maybe two or three yards. They've moved the, the stick a little bit, but plays like that are not going to get you down the field and back into the game. You're going to have to open up the offense a little more and throw a little more downfield. Yeah, it looks like that's what they may do here. Uh, Chris Tyrone Harris Ram is out in single coverage. He's a guy they may want to look to. Chris Harris here uh, looking for... They are for looking to him, but he's not open. Over the middle there, and credit number 36, Donnie Wright. We've heard his name this game. He was all over that one. The uh, big senior out of Burdine, Kentucky, a preseason all-conference pick, 5'9", 180. And uh, Chris Harris was in trouble and looking to throw over the middle. Donnie Wright was there to knock that pass down. Another player you need to credit on that is cornerback number six, Shane Ashby for Cumberland College. Locked out in a single coverage on Tyrone Ram, and they were looking to go to Ram, but they had him cover. They couldn't. The pressure came, and he just had to get rid of it. So Chris Harris now looks like he's going to be working this one out of the shotgun. Four wide receivers they have in this package here. Dwayne Crenshaw there split. And it's going to be a quarterback, maybe quarterback draw there, a keeper. No Harris where gets to go nothing on that. out of that Tony one. Irvin saw that from the moment that they snapped the ball. He was ready to go up and, and get that play. It really stops it for no gain. Cumberland is really starting to dominate the time of possession and this game union will go three and out again and now the clock continues to run and the clock becomes one of uh union college's worst enemies now down two touchdowns and in that two-point conversion they really needed to get something started on that drive and they didn't do it and now you've got a position where cumberland's going to get the ball in great field position almost a block number nine is going to be flagged for a running into the kicker it looks like back there sam odom made a dive at, at the punter and uh, Jeremy Kerr, and I don't know if this will be enough for, for the first down. It was a fourth and four, and that'll probably be a five-yarder, and the Union offense may be able to, to get back on the field. A tough call because he, he barely grazed him, but it looks like they're going to give him the call. They try and protect Personal foul, roughing the kicker on the defense, 15 yards, automatic first down. Wow, you know what, John Lewis? They call that a roughing the kicker. That's a little bit much. That was maybe the five yard running into the kicker, but they're gonna go ahead and give them the 15 yard roughing the kicker. And that's a big play right there because Cumberland had stopped and the defense had. Sam Odom is gonna get flagged for that. That only looked like the five yarder. That would have still given them the first down, but now you move out of bad field position to near midfield, a little bit over the 40 yard line and the offense is back in business. Let's see what they can do with the second opportunity. The last time they had a, a shot like this when they forced the fumble down deep in their own territory, two plays later, they turn it over. They can't do it now. So Chris Harris looking for a call, some confusion from the sideline here as this brings up first and 10 on the 43 and yeah, Union College, they got to do something with this one because this is an opportunity they need to take advantage of. 28-13, they're trailing. And Chris Harris under center here, two wide receiver, three wide receivers set here. Inside handoff. The handoff. Looks like that one may have been Hudson. 21, Hard Chad Price. Chad Price, we've uh, not heard his name that much so far. That was number 21, Chad Price. So uh, let's see if they can grind it out here. That one about a gain of, looks like maybe four or five on the play. They're gonna give him five and that's not a bad gain on, on first down yardage. They can set up some other things out of that. They, they've got single coverage again on the outside and they're gonna look for it. Quali Rolak and look at number six. He had an arm in there. Shane Ashby again on the single coverage and Quali Rolak is hot. He wants them to throw the flag. And you know what? Tuck Woolen wants them to throw the flag too. He is out in the face of the official. Rolak. That was close because he knocked the ball down with his right arm, but with his left arm, he had Rolak's arm. They're not gonna call it. Rolak That's one is, they may have missed. Rolak has been looking for that play, for that call uh, all game long. It's just not happening. You're right. Third and six now, 48, ball on the 48-yard line, 11.58 left in the fourth quarter, Union trailing 28-13. Chris Harris checks the play here in the shotgun, showing five wide receivers, and you can bet that they're going to pass, but it looks like he's going to, they were going to try to pass, but Harris is going to have to tuck it and run, and boy, does he ever. He is 
out of bounds with the first yard, first down yardage plus some. And uh, he just got in trouble there, but was able to uh, tuck and run. And he is out of the... Uh, Let's take a look at that questionable nod call of the interference. Uh, he Looks his, like he had his <laughs> he arm had his on it. Rolak wanted that ball. They don't get it. The official sees the hand batting the ball down, but he had him with the other arm. That should have been a pass interference the, call. Into the run, first down. Oh, and so now, now the referees are going to get another call, an unsportsmanlike conduct, maybe a hit out of bounds or, or a personal foul, and that is going to put Union in some great field position so they don't get the call of pass interference, but really the referees have more than made up for it with two unsportsmanlike conduct penalties. 30 yards of penalties will push Union all the way down near the 20. It looks like about the 22, 23 yard line. This is a perfect opportunity for them to get right back in the game. Harris was on his way out of bounds and he uh, may have got pushed a little bit, shoved a little bit as they got a, as maybe Cumberland got a little bit upset. The There's handoff the now up handoff. the middle to Lloyd Dollar. Dollar with some room, one man to beat and he is down inside the end zone. Looks Touchdown. Like, looks like Todd Hudson, John Lewis gets oh. in there. The great inside handoff, 23 yards in for the touchdown. And Union College, they do take advantage of the opportunities this time. The first play after the big penalty, and they're not going to complain about the uh, interference call now, I don't not think. Now. And also, the crowd has started to come to life. The cheerleaders are getting ready to throw the touchdown Frisbees into the fans, and the fans are starting to pick back up, too. The rain has kind of stopped, and, well, they're just going to hand them. I guess <laughs> you get a lawsuit. There they go. But... Uh, Good call there. I, I saw 10, but it was, I, I saw you 20. You saw the it zero. It's hard. We've kind of got a, some wood paneling blocking us. So they're going to go for the uh, two-point conversion here, Chip. 28-19 Union Trails. They're going to try to make it 21. Harris back to pass looking for the two-point conversion. Throws it in the end zone, and, and he's, he's got, got a big tight end. That is a, a, a two-point conversion. So they're right back in this one. That was number 88. We've got him on the uh, list here as, boy, we're we'll have to dig down the roster for this guy. This number, is number 88, 88 they don't use Kenny too many Heyman. tight ends. That's Kenny Heyman, the tight end out of Palm Bay, Florida. He's a 6'6", two, 230 senior. The two-point conversion is good, 21-28. And Tuck Woolen telling his troops to get back in this one, only down a touchdown, but 11.45 on the clock. And Cumberland College can really take a lot of time off the clock when they start running the ball. Well, they had to go for the two-point conversion sooner or later you might as well do it now and they get it and convert and now they're only down a touchdown and plenty of time left on the clock 11 45 still here in the fourth quarter and you can bet that Cumberland College uh, the run has been successful for him this game and you can bet that they'll continue to do it because not only does it grind out yardage it grinds out the clock 28 21 the score Cumberland College leading 11 45 left in the fourth quarter but certainly Union College, not a lot of problems there. Seven plays, 77 yards on the touchdown drive. Once again, it only took 3.06 to score. So their touchdown drives so far have been 3.06, 115, and 2.12. They haven't had the ball very much, but when they've had it, they've been able to score in short amount of times. Of course, they're aided by a couple of penalties there, and that's something if you're Dan Haley, you don't want to see your team get is those personal fouls that tack on the yardage and 15 yards a pop. Those will really move you down the field very quickly. And Union takes advantage of it, and they're right back in this game. The little squib kick, he lets it go out of bounds. It's a legal procedure, and they'll get the ball probably at the 35, unless they want it to re-kick. So uh, I would say that uh, Cumberland will probably go ahead and take the field position here. Uh, the kick there by number 27 wearing number 68 today. I guess he wanted to feel like a lineman. That's Tim Philpot out there. Illegal procedure is the call. You know, that's not a bad idea to squib it. But if you squib it, you've got to make sure you keep it in bounds because the whole idea is to kick it to somebody that's not used to running with the ball and to avoid the long return. But if you kick it out of bounds, you completely defeat the purpose of that. And now they've got pretty good field position again, and they'll probably give it right back to Freeman and see what he can do on the ground. On the 35, Freeman dots the eye. The handoff to Steve Means. Means down in there inside, about maybe a yard or two on the gain, if anything. That ball on the 35-yard line. 28-21 the score. Well, the rain has uh, let up a little bit, and the running game continues, though the field is in uh, some, uh, pretty decent shape after all the rain we've had today, Chip. Yeah, the field doesn't look too bad. There are some, some dark spots around the middle of the field, but towards the end zone that, that Cumberland is going to, the grass is still pretty green and, and bountiful down there, but you've got to think they're going to run the ball right now, and this is the portion of the field where the, the footing is going to be a little slippery, a little muddy out there, but... 
the they handoff to, to Freeman, and Freeman and there. He goes Freeman right up the middle and the great across shoot. the 50 yard line, and he is into Union College territory. Boy, Freeman has been the man today. They have continued to call his number, and that is why he was one of the leading rushers in Cumberland College history. I think that you're seeing exactly why he is the leading rusher in the Mid South Conference this year, why he's the reigning player of the week, and you know what? He's making a bid to be player of the week again. He's already got three touchdown runs. He's approaching the 200-yard mark and remember, in this game. And remember, one touchdown was called back. One touchdown was called back, so he is having a great game. And when you got a guy like this, it perfectly sets up the play action as well. Union wants to jump the pitch to the left, though. They will pitch it back to Freeman, and he is down on the sideline. He's got and another Collard first down. Got another first down. You're right, collared by Don Williams. Don Williams just let him get by and had to horse collar him out of bounds there. I think the, the only complaint you've got to have about those runs right there is, is he's going out of bounds trying to pick up the extra yardage, but you'd like to see that clock run. But you know what? They're driving down the field. They don't want to run the clock out. They're not looking to win this game by default. They're looking to punch it in, get another touchdown, and get the lead back up to 15 where it was before. You can Actually, bet. 14 because they got the two-point conversion. You can bet Dan Haley is offensive-minded as he continues to run this ball. 10-26 left in the fourth quarter. Cumberland College leading 28-21, and with the ball, Chris, uh, Patrick Williams under center here. The handoff this time to Randy Freeman up the middle and about maybe three or four yards on that one. The Cumberland Union College defense surrounds him and the uh, up the middle plays have not been that successful other than the draw plays have not been that successful for uh, Cumberland College. Seems like they're they're wanting to run up the middle a lot on first down just to see what the the defense is going to give them up there. They they ran up the middle twice on that last play. Of course Freeman had the one big carry. They've been running the fullback up the middle all day long. It's it's worked not very often. They've had a couple of games but more than more than often Union has has stopped it pretty effectively. But it, it's a great play to to keep the clock rolling and they've had success there they're getting a good average on the yard this is the pitch the play that's Chris, worked all day long is the pitch to the outside it's Chris work Morrison again. yeah Chris Morrison that time he uh, takes the pitch and he uh, gets run out of bounds and you're right Dan Haley is saying boy I really wish you guys would stay in bounds 937 now uh, on the clock and uh, they're picking up the yardage you cannot complain about the first down but when you get the first down it moves the chains and you get the first down out of bounds and you stop the clock Certainly, but right now they, they just want to punch it in. I, they're not as worried about the clock right now. Maybe on the next drive they will, but they're still taking off a pretty good chunk of yardage. Of course, it would be more if they weren't going out of bounds, but they want to punch this into the end zone, and they've got it back down on the 21-yard line. Tony May and Brandon Oliver split right, but this is a handoff up the middle. Once again on no first going. down, they go right up the middle again. They hold true to form. They'll pitch it out left on this play. Well, we'll see if Freeman comes back into the game course if that's their offense and I can predict it then they'll probably switch it up because if I can predict it you know Union College's coaching staff is about 15 plays ahead of me <laughs> possibly so probably ahead of all of us but it looks like the uh, backs that will stay in there right now will be uh, well they are Freeman is in the game right now also uh, Steve Means in there who has been a uh, part of that big uh, fullback dotting the eye and their so running backs second, have gotten dirty today they're second and eight now and it is getting a little muddy out there this one to to uh, looking for, thought we were looking for Freeman. He is in the end zone there, passing in the end zone. It looks like it was intercepted, but no, they're calling incomplete. incomplete they're still there. conferring. Yeah, the uh, wide receiver there was uh, Sean Oliver. The strong or, or safety. The, uh, strong safety, safety was Derek Tucker. Derek Turner. And uh, looks like he was, he was trying to uh, get in the interception. Looks like he almost had it, but uh, they're calling incompletion, and that'll bring up third and eight. That's a good play that the second time they've tested the defensive backs deep and he wasn't really open he just kind of threw it up hoping his wide receiver can make a play kind of lucky they didn't get the ball intercepted there because they're going to have a shot at a touchdown if not a field goal here you certainly want to be able to put the points on the board after driving the ball all the way down to the 21 yard line Steve they're bringing means. a blitz well Don Williams coming up on the blitz and he misses and looks like the uh, handoff here again don't know if that will get the first down yardage or not and if not, maybe a chip shot for a field goal or, or uh, looks like they're, they're saying that they've got the first down. We'll see what the refs say, because they're the ones that count. From this angle, it, I'm not sure if I, they've got it, but I it's think hard to tell. The refs are saying fourth down, looks like right now. So that's going to bring up uh, fourth down, and we'll see what uh, Union College is going to do. The offensive 
players still in the game. That brings up fourth and three. They're yeah, leading they're by. Not, they're not even close to the first down and fourth and three, and they're going to go Cumberland for it. Cumberland displaying some confidence. I don't know if they're going to actually go for this or try and draw them off sides. We'll see if no, they will go. That's right, and it's Freeman again. And with, he has not got no. the first down. That's a tough call right there as the press box begins to shake from the Union faithful, and that's a big stop for the defense because they're down in field goal range on about the 14 or the 15-yard line, and and that's only about a 30-yard field goal. You've got to wonder, that's twice now both teams have chosen to go for it on about fourth and three. Rich Johnson, what do you have? Well, this side of the field has not been nice to the, the offenses on fourth down. Union College went for it on fourth down on this side of the field, and the first half didn't make it. Now Cumberland College does it, and they don't make it. And this here is the touchdown Frisbee that the cheerleaders give away each time Union College scores a touchdown. They're going to have to give away another one of these Frisbees to the fans if Union College wants to win this game down by seven. They have the ball. We'll see what happens with that. Uh, they want to throw a few more of those Frisbees. You got that right. This Dwayne time they hand off to Dwayne Crenshaw. There is Crenshaw. a player down, though, number 75 for Union College, the big left tackle, and he's the anchor, Jim Ferguson. And that is not good for Union College if he's down clutching not sure it looks like maybe his shoulder. He went down in a heap and Tuck Woolham and the, the squad out there to check on their big offensive lineman because he is the, the anchor of that offensive line there at left tackle. The big left tackle, a senior out of Florence, Kentucky, played at Boone County High School. And uh, we do have this injury on the field and they, that's not a player that they need to lose. Of course, we talked about the field being uh, damp uh, so far, but luckily uh, we've gotten up to this point with no injuries. You know, you want to talk about a a guy who comes from a pedigree of a great high school for offensive linemen. How about Boone County? Owen Houck up there in Northern Kentucky. And he was probably blocking for a guy. There's a good chance he was blocking for a guy by the name of Sean Alexander, who was setting all the touchdown records. Of course, the, the Mr. Football in the state of Kentucky that went to Alabama and unfortunately was surprised by the Kentucky Wildcats a little earlier this season when they knock him off. But he is down and they are looking at him and it looks like they may be checking his knee or his ankle. Well, it's obvious that Jim Ferguson uh, is in pain right now. We'll see if we can uh, get an update on him a little bit later on. Of course, as, as we uh, look at this, uh, Chris Harris there and Tuck Willem having a little conversation about what, what is working and what is not. And we've seen so far that what's really been working right now is the pass for Union College. And uh, we'll see if they can uh, get down there. They've got eight minutes and 25 seconds to go ahead and uh, try to score another touchdown and tie this game up. Good to see that Jim Ferguson is out as the rain continues to uh, fall just a little bit. Jim Ferguson walks off the field under his own power. That's a good sign that for is a Union. Very good it looks sign. like he will probably hopefully be back. Rich Johnson looks like he's down there on the scene. He'll probably have something for us in, in just a moment. Right now, Union College faced with a second and seven, backed up deep in their own territory on the 17-yard line as the clock ticks. 8-17 and counting down. Chris Harris trying to get the squad down the field for the tying touchdown. Todd Hudson goes into motion here. Chris Harris calls for the ball, a little bit of a low staff. He's got it, he rolls out, looking for someone. He's gonna have to tuck and run again. He is in trouble and he slides down, maybe just short of the first down marker, although the ball looks like it may be, although his shoulders may be about the first down, it's really where your knees go down and we'll see what the refs say about they the spot They are signaling first down, as at least the chain gang has taken off the, the chain gang has declared its first down, which must mean that they've been given prior authority by the officials to go <laughs> forward. The authority has been handed down. Well, Chris Harris uh, made a good decision there to slide down, but a lot of the times when quarterbacks uh, slide down on the turf, they try to slide feet first, and it's where your knees go down, and sometimes you uh, end up not getting the first down, but he was okay there getting the first down, back into the shotgun again, and uh, a similar formation here, a couple of wide receivers. He's going to... Uh, Handed off here, and there is nowhere to go for number 21. Chad Price in Chad there on Price. the tackle, as was number 80 for Cumberland College. That was Todd Hudson who apparently got the handoff there, and yeah, Chad Price was all over that one. That one did not fool anybody. So that's going to be actually a loss of two yards. Set them back now, face second and 11 or second and 12. They mark it as one yard back. Chris Harris, though, looks remarkably composed back in the pocket. It's only uh, a very short time that he's been starting. Of course, he's a true freshman, played at Cardinal High School in Indianapolis, and he looks pretty composed right now. Let's see if he can direct his team back down the... Wally Rolak here on the uh, reception as uh, Harris got into uh, some trouble there. 
And Quali looks like uh, he's real close to the first down there. Rolak has been complaining this whole game to the officials that he's being held and being interfered with. That's his second reception of the game, and he made a great play to keep that from being intercepted because that was really out there up for grabs. Union College will now call a timeout. So they've got some things to talk about here. 6.41 left in the game. 28-21, Union College trailing. And uh, the rain looks like it's sprinkling a little bit. We continue to talk about it because when you've got a run-oriented offense and a pass-oriented offense going against each other, the weather sometimes plays a big factor. Yes, it does, and the rain still comes down a little bit. Union faced with maybe their biggest down of the game so far, third and four on their own 31. The climb, the time is ticking down now, just 6.41 remaining in this ballgame. If they want to go ahead and, and score and tie this up, this is the possession. They really need to do it because if they punt the ball away, Cumberland has shown pretty good success on the ground running the ball. Randy Freeman, 32 carries for 190 yards already this game through the third quarter. Patrick Wiggins, nine carries for 70 yards. Chris Morrison, eight for 34. Steve Means for 2.5. So they have had a field day on the ground just running at will. And you've got to think they'll be able, if they don't score, they'll at least be able to run out some of the clock and make it very difficult for Union to score. The cheerleaders are trying to fire up the field, the crowd here at Burstenow Field. And this is a big play right here. The crowd getting behind the the team is up on the bench, and the Cumberland College defense needs to step up here if they want to give their team the, the victory. Third and four, Chris Harris under center, looking for a big play, 641 left on the clock, and he is looking to pass. He throws it up the field. It is intercepted by number 15, Todd Davis, and boy, that is trouble. He is running up down to the 25, to the 20, and he is down. Oh, that is not what Union College needed, and Cumberland College comes up with a big defensive play Chris Harris was in trouble from the minute that snap went off, threw it straight down the middle of the field, and Todd Davis, the sophomore free safety out of Jacksonville, Florida, 6'1", 200 pounds, has an interception on the day. No, we, we wondered aloud what the true freshman's composure would be down the stretch here. Looked good so far. That ball, he was looking for Sean Woolham down the middle, and the ball just carried on him. It's wet. He overthrew it a little adrenaline, and that's probably the only thing worse for Union than to punt the ball away is to give the ball up in perfect field position. They've got it on the 24. Just a great play. Todd Davis, easy interception right there. That's right. Randy Freeman now takes the ball, and I, I would be willing to guess that uh, Dan Haley, is uh, he's had success running this ball, and especially when you're inside six minutes and you're up by a touchdown, you'll probably run the ball a little more, although Cumberland in great uh, field position right now as the ball is on the 20-yard line, uh, they're in the red zone, so if they put another touchdown on the board, that's trouble for Union College. Yeah, it is. Here's a replay of that interception. Steps up in the pocket, and just a little high. Woolham had no chance at it right into the arms of Todd Davis, and he does a nice job returning it back. And Back to live action here. Uh, the handoff up the middle, this one to uh, Steve Means. Steve Means, a uh, fullback, 6'1", 230, move from defensive end, and Boy, the, both these teams have really switched off a lot of uh, a lot of players from defense to offense. Let's go down to Rich Johnson, who's down on the sideline. How about it, Rich? Well, let's update the injury situation to Union College lineman Jim Ferguson. The trainers were looking at his right knee. They wrapped it in ice. They suspect a strained medial collateral ligament in his right knee. He will not return. Tough. That, That's a right, tough Rich. loss. That is a tough loss. Uh, as you said, they, he anchors that a line. Now, Patrick Wiggins again under center, looking to pass here, looking at the end zone. He's got a receiver there, and he is into the end zone, and that, boy, that is too bad for Union College because that hurts with five minutes left on the clock. Cumberland College may have secured a win with that touchdown pass. Back to Tony May again, and he really did a great job on that route. Cut it back, came back a little bit to his quarterback. He got it to him, and he did the rest. Tony May, a senior out of Lewisburg, Ohio, 5'10", 175, and he may have just secured a win for his Cumberland College Indians. And so far, that is, as far as we're, we know, that's his first reception of the game, so he picks his spot very well. Absolutely. If you're going to have one reception in the game, it might as well be a touchdown. The extra point attempt here by Donnelly is snapped down. It's up, and it is good. So Cumberland, Cumberland College, 35, Union College, 21. Could be trouble, but you can guarantee that they're going to go to the air right here for Union College because they got to pick up a lot of ground and they don't have a lot of time to do it. Well, that's the one thing about 
switching to a pass-oriented offense is that you can score a lot of points in a short amount of time. Their scoring drives have all been three minutes or three seconds and less so far this game. But really, that, that's a tough turn of events right there, the interception, and then they punch it in. A couple of plays later gives them a 14-point lead with just 5.08 left on the clock. They need really a spark now, maybe on the kickoff return, somebody to bust one open. That might give their defense some chance to make a stop. But right now, they're dealing with not only being down 14 points, but dealing with only five minutes and eight seconds left but, on the clock. And we'll see if Donnelly will give them a chance to return this. Uh, uh, he got a few directions there from one of the special teams coaches, so very possible he may uh, squib in a little bit down the field, have uh, one of the players try to pick it up and run and run a little bit of time off the clock. 35-21 the score here, Cumberland College leading Union College at Union College's home field, Birch Nile Stadium. We've had uh, a lot of uh, rain earlier today. It's been raining on and off. Sometimes uh, that doesn't help the pass-oriented offense, and already the quarterback for a Union, Chris Harris, has had a touchdown, had an interception, which led up to a Cumberland College touchdown. They're getting ready for the kickoff, and Donnelly's done a great job today kicking, making sure no extra points are missed, and just giving his ball club the chance, and that's a short kickoff fielded right about the 10-yard line. Lloyd Dollar again, no problems that time, and he's certainly got the speed, but he gets no blocking, and that is it. We've got a little extracurricular activity, maybe a ball on the ground or something. But Yeah, I'm it looked like uh, maybe the ball was coughed up there, but no, Dollar comes up, he's fine. A little extracurricular activity, and that will give... Union College the ball with 4.58 left in this game and trailing by 14 points. They will get the ball on right about their 24-yard line with two touchdowns to make up in just under five minutes to play, and they will probably go exclusively no huddle right now trying to work the sidelines and just throw the ball down the field. This is the time where the Cumberland College defense can really put some pressure on them, get the sack, maybe force him into another bad throw. Lloyd Dollar goes into motion, the handoff to Todd Hudson up the middle. That one for about two or three yards there. It's uh, It's been a tough game and a tough season for Union College. Of course, picking up the big win over North Greenville last year, and that was their first win of the season. And they really saw what the, uh, what Tuck Willem, Coach Tuck Willem calls the how mummy offense uh, go to work. And you know, it, uh, it, it's worked so far uh, this year, or actually uh, the last few games. Uh, Chris Harris really getting used to the system here, and he's done well for a freshman quarterback. They've had a lot of injuries and, and just some tough breaks the last two seasons, and there's the pressure we talked about. He may have been past the line of scrimmage. If he's not, it's a bad decision anyway. And Todd, Todd Davis, his second interception of the game, but it looks like he was past the line of scrimmage on that one. And that th interception may not hold up. But. And there's also another flag on the play and another, so lots of laundry out there right now. And they'll have, it'll take them some time to get this sorted out. And Chris Harris looks like he may have been shaken up on that play. Well, he's a little shaken up. He's a little frustrated. He's a little flustered right now. Nothing has gone right here in the, in the fourth quarter for, for Union College much, especially on these last two possessions. Yeah, he's, he's, he's kinda, shaken up, and he's grabbing his knees and getting ready to take off the helmet here. He may have taken a shot to the midsection. Looks like he's holding his uh, stomach there. Uh, of course, uh, as soon as you... forward pass, the quarterback with pass the line of scrimmage when he threw the ball. That penalty is declined. Dead ball, personal foul, on orange, illegal helmet contact, 15 yards, first down. Wow, so Union, uh, really a lot of mistakes on that entire play there. The interception and then the uh, personal foul, that's just, uh, that's not what it's going to take to uh, win a game here. So that pushes them... Uh, uh, well, actually, they gives the ball to Cumberland College, so this is a this is a mess for them for Union College when it looks like they were uh, going to try to get something going here. The interception, and then how about uh, another interception for uh, Todd Davis? Well, he's really come up big. Uh, they're going to get the ball. Uh, they declined the illegal forward pass. I'm, I would think they wouldn't get the ball if they, he was over the line of scrimmage, but they're going to go ahead and give the ball to it. Obviously, a a rule there and. Yeah, they've got the ball in, in great field position now. If it's an illegal forward pass, then how did he get the interception? That's well, I, I guess they can decline it. I, I thought he was past the line of scrimmage, but but if you decline that, then I guess that works from there. Randy Freeman now will uh, take the ball and he'll push it on up. Yeah, I guess if you decline that, then it automatically becomes a pass. So Todd Davis gets the so interception. The interception will stand, and that's just tough because not only do they get penalized for that, they get penalized for something else, and. It's really kind of falling apart for Union College here in the last four or five minutes. And Union has uh, just 
been, they got a little frustrated there with the personal foul. And it looks like uh, with 3.45 left on the clock as it runs down the Cumberland College, they're going to try to secure this win, leading 35-21. to 21. Patrick Wiggins under center again, out of the eye. Steve Means the fullback. Randy Freeman the running back, dotting the eye. Randy Freeman gets the pitch. Breaks one tackle, looking down the sideline there, pushed out of bounds. Looks like number 24, Reggie Sutton on the play there. Certainly, he wants to stay in bounds right now because all, he had, all Cumberland has to do is really run out the clock, and this one is over, up 14 points. Well, as we said, it's been a tough season for Union College. Only one win on the season, and looks like that may stand as Cumberland College with a win here today if they hold on the two-touchdown lead for another three minutes and 27 seconds. They will go five and four on the year, and they will take the Brass Lantern on back to... Uh, Cumberland College down in Williamsburg, Kentucky. And of course, we'll have the presentation of the Brass Lantern at the conclusion of this game. It's not that, that Union College has played poorly in this game. It's just the point of the game where they played poorly has been the worst possible time for it. It's been a, a pretty well played game for them, but they've had a couple of turnovers. They're going to go ahead and looks like get that first down, keep the chains moving. And Cumberland is fired up because it's been a two game win streak for Union College, they've had that brass lantern over here in Barberville, and they've got that trophy case big enough, and the guy that said that is backing it up today. He's over 200 yards. Randy Freeman, number five, has just had an outstanding game. He's He has, he needed only 27 yards to go over the 1,000-yard mark, and he <laughs> seems like he did that in about two plays. Yeah, he's, uh, he's more than accomplished that. He may be gunning for 2,000 in this game. <laughs> no doubt. Patrick Wiggins again under center, and you can probably bet they're going to pitch it to Randy Freeman, and they do. He runs around the corner. Nowhere to go. A flag, flag here on, on the, the play, play. And a good stop behind the line of scrimmage. Tim Lewis in on that, as well as Andre Washington, a senior and a freshman on the on the uh, stop, but a flag on the play, and looks like this one will come back. 35-21 the score, 2-44 left in the game. Cumberland College looking for a 5-4 and four record and a chance to take the Brass Lantern back to Williamsburg, Kentucky. Union College, one win on the year, hoping for another one. Holding on the offense, penalty is refused, second down. Well, the penalty is declined on the holding call. That will bring up second down for Cumberland College as they continue to grind out the ball and just grind out the clock. Union would prefer not to uh, give them another shot at the down, but with only 2.44 left, the clock is going to restart, and they will take as much of that as possible. The formality of the victory uh, just about 2 minutes and 37 seconds away. 17 seconds left on the play clock. We'll see how long Patrick Wiggins lets this uh, clock run down before he gets the playoff. He's well cognizant say. of the play clock as he's watching it. He's let just it looking at down. It. As you can see, now he's going to get under center, center, center about 5 seconds five left seconds. and snap it with as close to 1 as possible. And that's what they do. He's... Uh, Keeping the ball here, and he looks like he's just going to try to take it. Well, he's going to take he it out of, out of bounds. Out of bounds. Again. Bobby Milton there uh, rushes Patrick Wiggins out of bounds, so that will stop the clock at 2:14. And Dan Haley is probably standing over there saying, "If you're going to do it, if you're going to stay, if you're going to run the ball, let's stay just in bounds." Just stay in now. bounds because the clock stops at at 2:14. The probability of Union coming back and scoring twice in 2:14 is not very likely, but you'd like to get it over, not get anybody injured. And how about Dan Haley, one of the winningest high school football coaches in Kentucky, came from Bowling Green down to Cumberland College and uh, working on a program down here that's uh, only had a couple of wins over the last couple of years, but he's turned it around and looks like he'll be 5-4 and four on the season. They're going to have a winning record right now. Wiggins uh, rolling out, was looking to pass, nowhere to go. He breaks one tackle, and he's hitting to another here, and he looks like he may have stayed in bounds, and he does. He did stay in bounds. So he was cognizant keep, of where he was at the time. And that should keep the clock going, and it does. We're down to two minutes and ten seconds there. Looks like uh, John Fay was on the play, and he may have been shaken up a little bit. He gets up, and uh, he's going to stay in the lineup there. So Patrick Wiggins... Knowing where he was and what to do. Not only does he stay in bounds, but he's able to rush for the first down, and that's just a backbreaker for Union if they harbored any hopes of getting the ball back, maybe trying to block a field goal. Less and than two minutes now, 150 remaining in the game. The Cumberland clock. College leading 35 to 21. Just winding down. Union still has two timeouts left. Of course, Randy Freeman would certainly like to get into the end zone. He has three touchdowns already. He could tie the 
four touchdowns he scored earlier in a game this season, but he's not going to get it on that carry right there. He'll take the uh, pitch there, and he's down for about, looks like, three or four yards there. 125 left in the game. This one just academic right now, but Randy Freeman would certainly like, as you said, to add to his stats. As we get it under, that will make it second and eight, and we get underway here. Ball now on the 11-yard line, and Cumberland College will take a timeout. He'd like a chance. Or actually, Union College, the uh, referee reverses the call there, so Union takes the timeout. We will take a quick break. It's Cumberland College 35, Union College 21 in the Battle of the Brass Lantern, 111 to work. What's behind the biggest truck event of the year? One Tough Truck. And during the One Tough Truck event, your Chevy dealer's got a whole lot of tough trucks. The most dependable, longest-lasting trucks. Get a Chevy S10 for $189 a month or take $750 cash back. Get this Chevy full-size, now just $209 a month. So what's behind a Chevy? It ought to be you. During the One Tough Truck event, your Chevy is ready. Get it at your local Chevrolet dealer. For state-of-the-art medical technology, visit Mountain Comprehensive Health Corporation. MCHC has been delivering quality health care since 1971 to their medical clinics in Breathitt County, Owsley County, Buckhorn, Leatherwood Blackie, and Whitesburg. The new Whitesburg Clinic is staffed with 10 board-certified or board-eligible doctors and two dentists, allowing the clinic to offer OBGYN, family practice, internal medicine, pediatrics, x-ray, lab, and dental. The Whitesburg Clinic is also open until 8.30 p.m. on Wednesdays. Please call for an appointment. Back live at Barberville, Cumberland College leading this 35-21. It's all academic now. 1-11 in the Battle of the Brass Lantern to the, go. The one thing they could be searching for is Randy Freeman can tie his single-game touchdown record, which was set earlier this year against Bethel College. Four touchdowns in a game. He has three right now. He has a minute 11 left. This looks like Union may take another time. No, they're going to let the clock run. There's really no need to call a timeout as we're down into a third and six situation, and they're not gonna call a timeout. Cumberland College is certainly going to be in no hurry. And if you don't have to rub it in, you're up 14 points, you know you're gonna get the win. Unless you're really interested in getting that record, they might just kneel this one down. And Very possible, we have 48 seconds, the clock is running, and no hurry to get to the line of scrimmage here for Cumberland College. Now Patrick Wiggins leads his team up there, and we'll see what happens if they'll go ahead and kneel it down or if they'll try to pitch one out. Coaches and Randy football Freeman teams. On the, uh, dotting the eye. They hand off to Steve Means here. Means nowhere to go. And Patrick Wiggins saying, let's put the ball back in and run one more. Coaches and football teams seem to remember if you try and run up on the score and by scoring with 20-so seconds left in the game, that probably wouldn't sit too well with the Union College Bulldogs, but it looks like with the play clock still at 25 and the clock ticking down to 14 and 13. Cumberland College is going to come away victorious with this one. That's right. The coaches head across the field to congratulate each other, and they will take home the Brass Lantern for the very first time. So the time runs out. Cumberland College wins the Battle of the Brass Lantern, the third annual Battle of the Brass Lantern. They win it for the first time, 35-21 the score. When we come back, Rich Johnson with winning coach Dan Haley. Stay with us.